campus of Lipscomb University in Nashville, Tennessee. A new champion will be crowned today in men's soccer in the Atlantic Sun. It's the number four seed North Florida taking on the two seed Florida Gulf Coast University. Neither team has allowed a goal so far in this conference tournament. North Florida has scored eight times in its two matches. Hi everybody, Neil Solon's joined by the longtime college coach and MLS scout Richard Rudd. And Richard, North Florida is in the championship for the second time in as many years, and this time they're hoping to win it for the first time. Under Derek Marinados, they have had a renaissance at North Florida. When one game is first year, four the next year. Last year they went to the final, this year they want to win it all. FGCU, meanwhile, they're looking for their third title in four years, and they were knocked out last year by the Ospreys. Well, Bob Butehorn didn't want to talk about the revenge factor. He wants to focus on winning that championship because he's been the only coach at this university, and under him, the Eagles have been the dominant team in the Atlantic Sun. Speaking of dominant, goalies will probably dominate the headlines today under frigid conditions. Certainly under these wet, slippery ground conditions today, they're going to be very important. And for North Florida, Kyle Nasta coming off an injury didn't play last year. He's been the Atlantic Sun goalkeeper of the year. And in the other net for Florida Gulf Coast University, another goalkeeper coming back from injury. Nathan Ingham has been a bulwark in defense for the Eagles all season long. FGCU has allowed the fewest goals in the Atlantic Sun, and they battle for the championship with North Florida. Two Florida schools for the A-Sun title. We come back with the start of the match after this on ESPN3. 35 years, the Atlantic Sun Conference has supported its member institutions in their commitment to the hard work, dedication, and determination of building winners for life. As the A-Sun aggressively seeks to expand opportunities, its student athletes and the institutions they represent stand among the nation's best in academics, athletics, and service to their communities. At the A-Sun, the aim is the successful balance of student and athlete. The Atlantic Sun Conference, at its best, building winners for life. An eagle is not a what, you know, an eagle is a spirit, a spirit of community involvement, a spirit of academic excellence, a spirit of service. The best thing about UNF is the diversity. I just love the fact that I can come here and intermingle with people from all over the world. I'm Robert Allen. I'm an honor student here at the University of North Florida in Jacksonville. We have smaller classes. They're longer now and a little bit more demanding, but it's for our benefit. My experience with the professors is that they are very open. Here at UNF, you can receive a solid education. UNF, no one like you, no place like this. Every five years, the Atlantic Sun Conference has supported its member institutions in their commitment to the hard work, dedication, and determination of building winners for life. As the A-Sun aggressively seeks to expand opportunities, its student athletes and the institutions they represent stand among the nation's best in academics, athletics, and service to their communities. At the A-Sun, the aim is the successful balance of student and athlete. The Atlantic Sun Conference, at its best, building winners for life. Two teams shaking hands as we get started for the beginning of this match between the University of North Florida and FGCU, Neil Solons and Richard Broad. And Richard, let's uh, talk about this matchup today and the weather because it's certainly going to be a factor. It's 39 degrees as we get set for kickoff. It rained during much of the morning. And how is the field? Well, certainly you have two Florida teams. They're going to have a major adjustment to these conditions. But as Derek Marinato said, we're in the finals. We don't care what the weather is like. Let's get on with it. 
We take a look at the lineups first for North Florida. And at the top, Milan Kovacs has scored goals in all of the last three matches for North Florida. He has been on fire in the second half of the season. They're counting on him heavily this afternoon. Indeed, Florida Gulf Coast University, they mix it up up front, but a real key to their attack is Santiago Echeverri. Maybe the smallest man in the field, but he's got a big heart, and Bob Butehorn can't say enough good things about Santiago Echeverri. That's Florida Gulf Coast University. You have a unique 5-2-3 style as you get a look at their head coach, Bob Butehorn. Bob has been the only coach FGCU has had, very similar to the women's program, and like the women, trying to go to the NCAAs for the third time in four years. They have two great programs. Both the women and the men have really distinguished themselves. Jim Blankenship has done a marvelous job for the women, and Bob Butehorn has matched him in the work he's done with the men, establishing him at the top of the conference. Derek Marinato, so a few years ago, won one match in his first season for his second, and now the finals back-to-back -back years. He has brought a, a real revival in North Florida. He was an outstanding player, goalkeeper at Emory University, assistant at Furman, and he's applied all he's learned in those two good programs at North Florida. North Florida is in the white. FGCU in the blue and the green. If North Florida were to win the title, not only would it be their first soccer championship, it would be their first championship or automatic bid to the NCAA since they've joined the Atlantic Sun. Derek Marinato said, this is a breakthrough for our program. We want to show that we've arrived. This is the opportunity, these 90 minutes today. We got to look at Kyle Nasta in goal. Again, it's slick on the field. You had a chance to walk it a little bit. It's also real tough for the goalies right around the six. Well, the grounds crew came by, and if you take a look in front of the goal, they've put some sand down there to make the footing better, but it's still going to be treacherous. So North Florida will start with possession, and they want to possess, right, because they don't want FGCU to control the tempo. But FGCU is really the possession team, and the more athletic team is North Florida. That's Milan Kovacs, kind of a target forward, unable to connect, and here comes FGCU. This is Santiago Echeverri, had a goal and assist in the semifinal round. You'll see FGCU again, plays five in the back with Aaron Guillen. Moving toward the middle, this is Rodrigo Saravia. He's probably one of the most talented players on the pitch today. Echeverri, though, the maestro, and a nice steal by Diogo Quirino, one of the captains, and a standout in the back. Long lead, and Nasta off his line to connect. That's exactly what you want to see happen if you're North Florida. Get your goalkeeper to touch the ball early. Not a difficult chance, obviously. It gets Nasta in the game. This is Simon Solstad, a lefty. Derek Marinados has lots of variety to his attack. Really is strong from the back. Very athletic in the center of the back, North Florida. It was Teddy Malumba with a touch for Simon Solstad. Again, strong left foot, and this is Kovacs on the run. But the ball was skid over the end line for a goal kick. And you see one of the things that this field will do. The ball will carry, it'll run away, so you cannot afford to be direct and play the ball straight up. You've got to play the ball in at angles and keep possession. As a team, North Florida, though, is a little bit more of a direct attacking team. How does that impact them today? Again, as you say, they cannot be as direct, and they have people that can handle the ball well. I think they'll adjust very quickly. Jay Bolt handles for North Florida. And now Simon Solstad back to Teddy Malumba. Teddy's a fifth-year senior who's come back off an ACL injury. And talking with Derek Marinados yesterday, he really felt that he's kind of locked down that back. He certainly has. He's been a key. They had a lot of injuries in the back. They lost a couple players early, Nick May and Casey Corona, so they had to move Malumba into the back, and he's done a great job at the left side of the central defense. And there Malumba able to head it forward as North Florida on the long service, able to gain possession back. Jay Bolt in the middle. That's Helga Peachman, first team all-conference selection with the touch. 
Solstad trying to lead Drew Sprague, who scored the first goal for North Florida in the semi. And now a push down the sideline by FGCU. Malumbo with a nice battle. And it'll be North Florida going the other way. Talked about the athleticism of North Florida, but Florida Gulf Coast University has some athletes too. And Bob Butorn, best athlete, is that man who just made the run there. Coming down the flank, Kamar Mari at the freshman. He was outstanding in the semifinals. He's been an outstanding player all year long. He's recently moved into the starting lineup. Milan Kovacs goals the last three matches, unable to make the turn on the wet turf. We do have, I would call it windswept rain right now. Not as heavy as it was earlier in the day. Thankfully, and that makes the conditions a little bit better, but you've got to be a little bit careful. You saw right there, at your very struggle, slipped to receive that ball. He's very good on it, though, and he recovered quickly. And a nice job by Chris Bush to knock that away. And North Florida now tries to control, gain some possession. Little battle in the middle with Alex Morell, speedy wide midfielder. Sprague with a nice one touch. And a foul will be called on Marriott of FGCU as Peachman went down. I don't think possession is that big a concern for North Florida because they've dropped Helga Peachman into the midfield. The transfer from William Casey University or William Carey University can come back and he can give them possession. And behind him, Bush wins a lot of balls. Their midfield is very tough. This is where North Florida can be extremely solid on set pieces. It's how they scored three goals in the quarterfinals and also got a goal in the semifinal on Friday. What grounds like this, why not take a shot if you're Helga Peachman? Sprague got a foot on it, but FGCU able to knock it away. This is Henry Panagos with a touch back to Skyler Wilkes. That was an opportunity there. Peachman, I'm not sure what he was trying to do. I would like to see him shoot that ball. Maybe he wasn't just miss it. It'd be very clean technically. He can shoot from long range, and that ball will skid and will certainly test Ingham in the goal if they take long range shots. Neither goalie has been tested. Again, five minutes and change into the finals of the Atlantic Sun Championship. Nice carry by Echeverry. And able to slide toward the 18. Bolt able to step in, though, for North Florida. FGCU, though, maintains possession. This is Will Soudois, a sophomore from France, who slipped, wanted the call, didn't get it. North Florida and FGCU played a very physical semifinal last year in the Atlantic Sun Tournament. They did in a physical match when they played this year for, for a tie 2-2 earlier in the season. This is the long ball for Kovacs. He is slipping and sliding there in the back by Samoyoya, but he's able to get it forward. Good job by Samoya, who has been starting all year. Nicholas Samoya, freshman, you entrust him with a responsibility to organize the defense from that central position. He's responded very well. Native of Guatemala, very international side for FGCU, right, Richard? Oh, they have a tremendously international flavor here. They've got Colombian players like Echeverry. They've got uh, Luis Vega, as well as Nicholas Samoya from uh, Guatemala, they've got players from France like Soudois and players from Spain, Albert Ruiz coming off the bench. Very international flavor. Here's Drew Sprague. Couldn't connect with Kovacs. And now FGCU on the run the other way. This is the type of game FGCU likes to play. A lot of possession. Echeverry trying to break through three. Now four defenders and Malumba steps in. He can beat people, but not four or five defenders at once. He needs to give that ball off. He can create opportunities. That's what Echeverry can do and involve his teammates. Here's a very skilled senior defensive midfielder who just got it away. That was Christopher Bush. He was a key to this team getting the final last year. He's just a great ball winner. Does all the dirty work and just wins balls, makes his teammates look better. Jay Bolts was seeking Peachman, but he slipped and fell on the turf. And now, because of a slip, here comes FGCU going forward. Panagos wide to Soudois. The test is just wide as Nasta had the angle. You talked about the weather conditions. Two players slipped down that time. Peachman trying to go for the pass from Bolt and then uh, Teddy Malumba in the back and it really was very, almost very costly. Third match in five days for North Florida and chatting with Derek Marinados, he really wasn't that worried about the fitness because of the cold weather more 
is the conditions on the field today. The conditions are a factor, but the thing is they played three games in five days, but they won so decisively he was able to rest his players and use that very, very deep bench he has. Jay Bolt now, wide right side defender. He will go forward, in fact, has a goal in this tournament and a couple assists, and North Florida will get the throw in. Very athletic defense for North Florida. The smallest player out there, Jay Bolt, is maybe the fieriest, he's a feisty, tough defender. Played left back a lot of last season. On the right side this year with Solstad coming back. Off his line to control is Ingham. Now nearly nine minutes into the match, neither keeper has been tested. No shots on frame. And Neil, that needs to change. These teams need to open up and take shots, take them low and hard, and make that ball skid on the ground and get in for rebounds. You want to take shots in days like this because anything can happen. If you're in the championship, though, don't you usually see teams play a little more conservatively early? Well, you do. You don't want to take chances on defense. And in the offense, you want to open up, and I'd like to see some shots from 40 yards. Here's Echeverry leading Skyler Wilkes and now gets it back. North Florida forcing him to give it up. Aaron Guillen, Jr. from Texas in the back. As FGCU will reverse fields. It's Kamar Marriott. Now playing for Silva. One touch to Echeverry, has some space. Offside flag was on. Was an offside call that situation, but good use of Echeverry by the Eagles thus far. Uh, Henry Panagos, number 18, getting four. He usually plays a little deeper in the midfield, but Echeverry's playing underneath, and they're using Panagos and the 14, Javier Silva alongside him up front. Bob Udhorn told me yesterday that he wasn't quite sure who he wanted to use up front. He has a lot of interchangeable parts. The weather was going to play a factor. In fact, Panagos didn't even play in the semis. Panagos is a very fine player. He's had some all-conference honors and shows how deep this team is, Florida Gulf Coast University. Teddy Malumba, who slipped earlier, leading to an opportunity for FGCU. There, keeps his ground. Ball reversed. And now here comes North Florida. Nice job by Kovacs. Tries to beat Guillen to the corner. Back for Peachman. Nice defense by Guillen. FGCU now with the throw in, well defended. The German, Helga Peachman, is struggling with a footing on this. You'd think a German player would be very comfortable with this kind of situation, but Peachman's not really been able to get in the game because the footing is bothering him. Who makes a good mutter? Because that's the kind of turf you're looking at today. Well, in general, the shorter, stockier players seem to have an advantage on this. A tall, lanky player like Peachman doesn't have the low center of gravity. That's generally a truth, but you just don't know who plays better on which condition. FGCU building the attack from the back. Nice job finding Saravia, considered one of the top 100 players in the country from a talent level. Very, very clever and quick on the ball. And now there are a nice one touch from Silva. Sudwa now on the run for Silva, who is barely able to get a foot on it. Nice defense by Palumba and Nasta able to come up. I like what Florida Gulf Coast University is doing, knocking the ball wide. They're gonna have trouble penetrating down the center. A big, very athletic defense uh, of Malumba and Carino, they look like an MLS defense back there. Very, very sturdy. Quirino, senior from Brazil who transferred in from junior college. A key to getting his side to the final last year. And there's Drew Sprague with a nice touch. There's Kovacs, again, goals the last three matches. Tried to slide it across. Well defended by FGCU, now Echeverry on a counter. Echeverry with some space, slides down. Call gonna be outside the box, I would imagine. And it'll be a very 
key opportunity here a direct kick. Interesting to see coming over was Quierno, and he made a nice play, but Jay Bolt got his hand on Etcheverry's back just at the edge of the penalty area. Could have been a penalty kick. Uh, very, very close. It's going to be Soudoua with the free kick and the wall with four players. Nasta is very good at setting up the wall properly so he can cut off the angles. It has to be, and this could be taken by Soudoua, but he may push the ball forward. I see Saravia in a position there. And headed out. But Saravia controls and well wide. Saravia can strike a good ball from outside. We've had two restarts thus far. Neither team made much of them. They're going to be important in a game like this when it may be difficult to get set up in the run of play. So far, FGCU has had the better of the shots to this point. Not great opportunities, but probably a little better than North Florida. Again, you want to take as many chances as you can on wet, far from ideal conditions. North Florida is trying to gain some sort of controlled possession because speaking with Derek Marinados, his feeling was we want to force them to defend. They're a possession team. He doesn't want to give up a lot of time of possession to Florida Gulf Coast University because they are play. They have a number of players who are very quick and very technically gifted on the ball. North Florida trying to build from the back. Long ball by Malumba, fairly direct. On the run, Kovacs will not get there. But it will be a throw in for North Florida. And Samayoa had to make the tackle and slide it out of bounds. Fine job by Nicholas Samayo, a very impressive, impressive freshman from Columbia. Solstad trying to maintain Guatemala. possession. Silva steals now to Sudwa, and here comes FGCU and their maestro in the middle, Echeverry. This Tried to the, slide it wide, very difficult to keep that in play. Very nice job by Wilkes. This is the Colombian Echeverry, and he's very, very good. Good ball into the box by Wilkes. Well done to come off his line by Nasta, though and able to make the play. Really the first time he's truly been challenged. He responded very well, like the aggressiveness coming off his line. He's not big, but he comes out very aggressive. He's a very good athlete. And he also will make the terrific save. He made a couple of stand on your head type plays against Lipscomb in the first half in the semifinal match. North Florida has outscored the opposition 12-0 their last three matches, their best run of the year but they really have not had possession or opportunities in the first 15 minutes of the final. Volk able to come away with that 50-50 ball for Echeverry. Now Peachman. Sprague slipped. Peachman, I think, probably wanted to give it up to him. And now Saravia in the middle to Silva. This has been a nice combination early. Wide is Penagos. And now FGCU will send it back. Kamar Marriott, freshman from Tampa, Florida. Both teams getting accustomed to I don't know if you would call it winter weather in Tennessee as Echeverry sends out long and far over the top. But this certainly is in Florida weather. No, it's not. And both these teams, I think, would rather be at home in their own state. But they're here, and, and this is what they have to do. And to win a championship, this is what you need to work in less than ideal conditions oftentimes. At that time there, Echeverry, he wasn't on target. He needs to keep, keep taking shots from long range because the weather is a factor. That ball will skid on a wet field. Sprague had trouble on that long ball for North Florida, allowing FGCU to get some possession. Here's Bolt pushing it toward Solstad. Field not as wide here at Lipscomb as is the home of the Eagles FGCU. Morrell trying to run that one down. Sprague trying to keep it alive in the FGCUN. Here is Morell, very speedy wide midfielder. Now Christopher Bush back toward Malumba, who's got a strong left foot. Seeking Bailey Cashin. But FGCU on the turnover now with a little transition.
Rain starting to pick up a little bit. 18 minutes into the match. FGCU trying to win a title for the third time in four years. And Nasta tested, but able to keep his ground fairly well. Florida right. goes Gulf Coast University seems to be a little eager now. They sort of found their legs in this ground, and they're willing to take shots on Nasta. He's a good shot saver. Keep the ball on the ground. It makes it a lot harder. We got a look at Steven Oliveira's shot on net. Had some space. Yeah, he's not been involved thus far. It's a well-taken shot to the far post. He gets it on the ground. It might be even more effective. Nasta with six shutouts, a school record, and the last three. Solstad with a quick restart on the throw-in. Milan Kovacs with nowhere to go. But Solstad keeping it in. And now FGCU with David Robledo down the flank. Footing is certainly going to become more difficult as the rain is picking up in intensity. Florida Gulf Coast University seems to have discovered something tacking down that right side. They've got Simon Solstad there, North Florida's left back, and he's a very strong player, good on the ball, but not that quick, and the speed and the quickness may be a real advantage for the Eagles going down the right side. Both teams are fairly deep, so we'll see in this first half if Derek Marinados decides to substitute or change any tactics. Echeverry challenged by Jay Bolt. Alex Morrell has speed. Echeverry wanted the foul and got it from Morrell, and it'll be a free kick. Echeverry has been playing in a withdrawn position today, and he's been very effective. He's probably had more touches than any player. He's around the ball a lot, and he's a tough man to bring down, and that's a not a smart foul by Morrell. It gives them a restart from a reasonably close range. Skyler Wilkes with that restart. Junior from Tampa, whose brother played at North Florida, and Mercer Winston. Strong athletic player, very good left foot. I look for him to get that ball into the box, give his teammates a chance to get at her. Goes far post. Malumba's there. And it's headed away, so FGC with the throw in. Nice ball in by Wilkes, and he was looking there for Silva, but when you've got players like Malumba and Quirino, you're not going to get too many balls in the center of that defense, so you're going to be able to win in the air. Sudwa with the quick throw in. And now Solstad wins the 50-50 ball just outside the 18. But FGCU keeping it in. Now is Oliveri with the battle and another throw in for the Eagles. Florida Gulf, Coast, Florida Gulf Coast University has had much more possession of the ball than Derek Marinotis would like thus far. When you're a possession team, you're probably, what, what 70% if you're FGCU to maintain possession? That's for them success? Well, you, you can talk about it the time of possession, but it's where they're possessing is important. FGCU is getting it into dangerous spots mm. like that one. Beautiful cross, Silva, just a bit wide. But FGCU maintaining possession and the pressure. Had just too much of the ball for North Florida's good thus far. Solstad lost possession, Malumba sending it out. Sprague tried to come on to it, unable to. And Guillen keeps it in North Florida's end. Echeverry, significant possession time in this first portion of the first half. Possession is important, but you have to get good chances. And they're starting to get the ball in the attacking third in dangerous spots. Echeverry trying to lead Silva onto it. Nice step up by Quirino to knock it away for a moment. Problem that Bob Butorin's team has this year is getting the ball in the back of the net. But they're getting chances now. And another opportunity. Teddy Malumbo, though, able to slide it away from Silva. And that should be off FGCU, it is. And Neil, the best chances, in my opinion, are going to be by working the ball wide around the flanks. Those two central defenders for North Florida are just outstanding. Carino, the captain, and the assistant captain, Teddy Malumba. They've been 
pillars of strength since Malumbo went into the back four. The FGCU, you mentioned this trouble scoring. They have put just 19 balls in the back of the net this year. Sometimes you can get caught up in possession, but I think that Bob Butehorn's stressed that with his team. They're looking to go to go well thus far. Good attempt by Peachman to lead Bolt, who made a long run forward. North Florida's going to have to rotate back with Bolt now trailing the play. Christopher Bush able to maintain possession. Onto it, Peachman. Now Morell, who stepped in and couldn't slide back on the wet turf. Christopher Bush is a key to this team for North Florida, winning the ball and finding Peachman. But Helga Peachman has not been able to get in the game. He's been very comfortable, very uncomfortable on this wet ground. Speaking of, of uncomfortable, Drew Sprague, they're challenging FGCU in the back, maybe trying to force some of that possession away. Again, you have to score, but North Florida is just giving too much of the ball to Florida Gulf Coast University thus far. Lead for Echeverry. Off a of foot of North Florida. Wilkes to take the throw. Here comes Echeverry down the flank. Jay Bolt, sophomore standout defending. Now Wilkes across. Missed it wide, no one able to get onto that. Too low of an angle to do so. You know, you mentioned early on that's a five-man defense, five in the back, but the way they play it at Florida Gulf Coast University is with three anchors in the back, and then Skyler Wilkes and, and Kierno Asuedos can come up down the right side or the left side. So with Suedos going down the right and with Wilkes going down the left, they're in position to get in crosses. This is where they're effective in the attack. They certainly have very versatile players that allow them to maintain that possession and allow guys to transition. Here's the lead for Silva. Is he on? I guess so. And Nasta off his line. Pretty yeah, good that, run by Silva. That aggressive play by Nasta was a good run by Silva. Good ball by Echeverry. Nice tracking by Jay Bolt at the right back position for the Ospreys. North Florida looking for a counter. Jay Bolt will at least make Ingham come offline, but we haven't had mentioned Nate Ingham's name in about 15 minutes. We haven't, and it's one of the things about goalkeeper position. You're sometimes better if you're touching the ball more. You get in the game. Ingham has not had to handle the ball. It could be a problem if the Ospreys mount a quick counterattack. FGCU has controlled for the first 25 minutes or so, but again, nil-nil in this championship with a winner to the NCAAs. Rodrigo Saravia stand out on the field and academically. Sliding it forward is maintaining possession now Saravia. Cutting toward the 18. And now out wide to Sudwa. Saravia, another one of those players from Guatemala. It's been important for Bob Budorn's team. This is Kamar Marriott. Moved into the starting lineup several games ago and has been a big spark. There might have held possession a little too long in Malumba takes it back for North Florida. Battle there between two super athletes, Marriott coming forward, Malumba dispossessing him. 50-50 ball between Bolt and Silva. And it will stay with FGCU. Jay Bolt, the smallest man in the defense, may play the biggest. He doesn't know he's that small, but he's like that little dog that just goes and takes on those big Dobermans. Second team all-conference player. Found the back of the net in the quarters at a 5 nothing win over USC Upstate. There's North Florida trying to get some possession and build from the back. Alex Morell steps up. Not really been able to use his quickness. As here comes Solstad, strong left foot on the wide side. Bailey Cashin had it taken away from behind, and now the foul on Cashin in a little bit of frustration. Probably a good foul that time because it slowed down the counterattack of the Eagles. FGC reverses to Skyler Wilkes. Nice one touch with Echeverry, and here comes FGCU building numbers once again. Oliveri lost but then immediately got it back. Hey, hey, hey. 
First half of play. Neither team has used its bench in this championship to this point. Good run. And nice defense leading to another throw in for FGCU. Once again, the Eagles are most effective when they work the ball wide. Skyler Wilson, big athletic guy coming down the left side. And Sway Dwar on the right side. They're dangerous, and they've caused problems for the Ospreys' defense. Bolts knocks it away from Echeverry for a moment. Now Morrell steps up for North Florida. Here from Lakeland, Florida. Good quick one touch. And now the counter. Peachman slides it left to Sprague, still on side. And he'll send it wide, looking for Kovacs, who had scored the last three matches. Again, Peachman coming forward, finding Sprague, putting him in a good opportunity. But I'd like to see how Peachman come forward and take a strike. He's very good technically. And again, Nathan Ingham hasn't had to handle the ball much at all this far. They're on the goal kick, saying it well wide to Soudois. Two thirds of the way through the first half. FGCU unable to come up with the ball. There was Wilkes, not the clean chest trap, and it'll be a throw in for North Florida. A little bit of an uh, ambitious pass by Nicholas Samaoya, Samaoya that time. Indeed. So now Morell in North Florida. Kovacs had it knocked away, another throw in. This right near the corner. Neil, you mentioned Morell. He's a very dangerous player out wide. He was playing up front. And he's a trailing midfielder early in his career. Putting him wide has been very effective because he can take people on. He hasn't had much of a chance to do so thus far. Here he gets a try, gets knocked down, and actually very kicking that ball. I don't think he was really kicking that ball at Morell. It just happened to be kicking the ball away. Morell does like to take people on. He's fouled by Wilkes, and Echeverry kicks the ball, and I don't think there was an intent to go to Morell, no. even though he's got that hand up waving for the guard. Well, here is Morell and Peachman. Peachman probably has the stronger leg if either is to take this at goal. This is not a good angle for Helga Peachman. He's strongest with his right foot. You need a left footer if you're gonna shoot this one directly. Well, got it pushed from Morell and then sent it way over the top to Peachman. North Florida's not had very much possession, and they've not taken good advantage of the possession they've had. They've had restarts a couple, and they haven't made anything of the restarts thus far. And if you don't have possession, you've got to take advantage of every opportunity. The Ospreys are not doing that. We remain scoreless as Ingham sending it long for Robledo, but stepping up Solstad. And the 50-51 by North Florida. Here is Morrell, challenged in the middle, lost, but Bush regains for the Ospreys. Saw there what happens when Morrell gets the ball in the middle. People can close on him. If he gets wide, he can isolate and take players on. I think that's one of the things that Derek Marinados will tell his team to do. Let's get the ball wide. Let's attack them out at those flank positions. Wind has certainly picked up a little bit here at Lipscomb University. How does that impact North Florida, which is playing a little more directly. Well, right now they're going into the wind. It's not that strong a wind. If it does get stronger, it's going to be a factor. But then the second half, they'll if it continues going in the same direction, they'll be going with the wind. And there's a slip by Cashin of North Florida, and here comes FGC on the move. Down the flank for Echeverry. North Florida wanted a handball there, not called, and then the push is on Silva, so here comes North Florida the once, other way on the restart. Once again, Christopher Bush getting back and doing that job in front of the back four. He's a key man for the North Florida defense, protecting that back four and winning balls from the midfield. It's a very good midfield that he's going against today at the Eagles have. Simon Solstad. Long ball down the flank for Kovacs. Samayoa battling with him. Should be a goal kick. It is, as it just slid over the line. That's really been all the attack that the Ospreys have had thus far. Long balls out of the back looking for Kovacs. They have not been able to link up effectively in the attacking third. That's your very loss to Morell. Peachman tried to slide it through. Unable to do so effectively. Nice job stepping in by Guillen. 
And now it's Sudwa on the right flank for FGCU. Solstad steps in, so a throw in for FGCU just inside midfield. 33rd minute, still scoreless. Good tackle that time by Solstad. He can't afford to let these fast players on Florida Gulf Coast University get down the flank. Bolt forced to step in there as Wilkes, again, moving forward a lot in this first half. Neil, you talked earlier about the weather conditions. What kind of player is most effective under these conditions? Well, you see the difference. Echeverry, the small, short player, low center gravity, has been able to maintain possession very effectively. And Peachman, tall, rangy player, just has not gotten his rhythm and really gotten into the game. We well, have that low center of gravity. You know where you're going once you do have the ball, too. The defender's got to worry about you and your footing. As North Florida now off the quick restart. Here's Morell using his speed. Kovacs. Ron Kovacs now to Morell. As Bolt steps across midfield. And it's sent wide to Solstad, but not effectively. And Sudwa heads it away. Bush, saw, though, steps up. Saw there Neil Drew. Uh, uh, Morell, Alex Morell getting the ball. He's able to beat one player. And next time he got the ball, two men right on him. So Florida Gulf Coast University knows how dangerous Alex Morell can be. On comes Kovacs. Couldn't find Peachman. Again, footing difficult for the junior who transferred in from William Casey University, an NAI a school in Mississippi. Again, long lead for Sprague, this time ineffective. FGCU has done a nice job handling the long ball. We have those three players in the back. have been terrific, Guillen and Samayoa and Marriott. They're very athletic and very quick. Foul called on North Florida. And FGCU with the restart. Sudwa near the 18, has some space, and finds the back of the net. Will Sudwa with the goal. And FGCU answers the first tally of the year for Will Sudwa. A couple games ago, Will Sudwa was benched by Bob Butehorn for being late to practice. He's on time with a shot here, running across the top of the box. They don't get there in time, and even a fine goalkeeper like Kyle Nasta cannot make that play. This is just a great shot. Nasta has very little chance to the far post. one nothing. That possession is paid off in a goal for the Eagles. Boy, what a time for your first goal of the year in the championship game for FGCU. Bob Butehorn has stressed discipline with his team. A year ago when they lost to North Florida, they had a couple of players carded at the end of the game, and Bob Butehorn has stressed it over and over again. Soudoua was benched for not getting to practice on time. And Bob Butehorn told me, he said, nothing serious, but he just didn't do what he was expected to do. And Soudoua has learned his lesson. He's been very dangerous to the flank. He's able to get inside, starting in that flank position. That's where they've caused immense problems for North Florida down this side. Now Marriott battling with Malumba for position and just enough of a little edge by Malumba to force Marriott to really not get a strong leg on it. Central defenders are very, very good, but they couldn't react. That's a great effort by Sudwa. They've gone out wide. Sudwa makes a driving run inside, hits a shot from the top of the box. And the Eagles have really dominated the game thus far. The Ospreys have hardly even had the ball. North Florida, though, in the match at FGC earlier this year, trailed 1-0 and 2-1, tying it on both occasions. So they now have, we see what kind of resolve they have. They have great character. Derek Marinato said these guys, he's got a lot of people. He can come off the bench. They've all bought in. They don't give up, and they're not out of this game yet, but they've got to take the game to Florida Gulf Coast University. They're sitting back and giving the other the opposition far too much of the ball and possession and field control. After the goal was scored, a couple changes made. This is Christian Pedroza who just had the ball for North Florida and Camillo Garcia is now playing up front as uh, or in the midfield as Helga Peachman has come out. And the, another important change, they moved Jay Bolt from the right side to the left side. He's very quick, very tenacious and Derek Marinatos has seen what the, the Eagles have been able to do to his team down the left-hand side and that's been the danger area and 
Florida Gulf Coast University discovered something and they made the most of it. Well, Simon Solstad came out. You mentioned Bolt moving to the left side and chatting with uh, Derek a little bit about the new player on the right side, Christian Pedrosa. He said he's a former football player and we call him our lockdown corner. And he's going to have to be kind of locked down the way FGCU has gotten the momentum here in the first half. They have confidence in Jay Bolt. He's got a big responsibility shutting down the Eagles attack down their right flank. Well, now let's see if they try and attack the left flank since there's a new defender there in Pedrosa. And the other change deals with the offense, Neil. They brought in Camillo Garcia, who's a little quicker, smaller, lower to the ground. Impeachment's really struggled, and Derek Marinatis has to get him involved. They may bring him back up top. FGCU countered by bringing on Felipe D'Souza, who had a huge goal in the semifinal and has five on the year. Sudwa's lead ahead finds no one. Jay Bolt is there. And now the foul called on FGCU, and it will be North Florida with it. And is that going to be a yellow? Uh, no yellow. I thought for a moment there was going to be one. I wasn't quite sure what the official was talking about at that particular time. Um, we're getting a delay and a stoppage in, in time. Um, I'm a little confused by this. I thought I thought our, our head official, Randy Cook, was going to book someone there. It will be a free kick for North Florida. And the 50-50 ball. One now by FGCU, and this is Saravia for the Eagles. Again, Will Sudwa, about 33 minutes in with his first goal of the season, second of his career for the sophomore. The difference in this match. Dangerous ball there. Malumba got a foot on it momentarily, and now another shot on net, this time by Isaiah Madrid who entered after the goal had scored. And he almost got on the board there. He had a pretty good angle. They are very deep. They can bring Isaiah Madrid and Felipe D'Souza off the bench. Those players are both second team all conference coming off the bench. A lot of depth on this Eagles team. They maintain their back, but up front again, as you mentioned, lots of strikers. Just surprising that it's only the 20th goal FGCU has scored this year. Well, sometimes when you make too many substitutions, you lose a bit of the rhythm, but they're finding it now, and they, they've dominated the first half. First goal allowed by North Florida in four matches. Again, trying to see if they can come up with some sort of counter in the final six minutes and change of half number one. Wilkes there stepping up to slow North Florida. Ospreys again knocked out FGCU last year in the semifinals in Fort Myers 2-1. And tied him in 2-2 this year in the regular season. And the foul called on Saravia, who's disputing the call. Well, the dispute is not because Saravia's foul. They called a foul, I believe, on Skylar Wilkes, who grabbed Morell as he went by. And this is what Alex Morell brings to the offense for the Ospreys. He's very quick. He can take players on. Like to see them get the ball to his feet in the attacking end more frequently. Now Pedroza in the back to Quirino. Ball reverse now to Malumba. And Malumba challenged by D'Souza. Now to Jay Bolt. And here comes North Florida. Again, trying to build an attack in the final five minutes and force Nate Ingham to make a play. He's had very little to do thus far, but he's going to get a little bit more, I think, as North Florida gets in the game. And I love this substitution by Derek Marinato. Si Simon uh, Solstad is a very dangerous player with a great, great left foot, but he was struggling keeping up with the fast players out wide. Putting Jay Bold at the left back is a very smart move by Derek Marinato. Let's see if it pays off again. A couple of fouls in FGCU in the past couple of moments leading to this free kick from about 30 yards out or so. And unfortunately, they don't have Peachman as a restart specialist in the game, but they didn't do much when he was in there. Let's see if they can do a little bit more with this because they've had a couple of restarts and have made nothing of them thus far. Near the top of the box. Looked like barely flicked on there by Milan Kovacs, but not well enough to make it 
anything more than a goal kick for FGCU. That's a lot better effort. Morrell came over and took it. He laid the ball in. Kovacs went to flick. It didn't quite get it all, but if you watch carefully, you saw Ingham stumble, and if he slips and falls, that ball can end up in the back of the net. You've got to make more of these restart situations if you're North Florida. Ball pushed wide to Sudwad. Well done to receive, but maybe a little too fancy of a touch pass. And now in space, here comes Camilo Garcia. Long lead ahead, almost found Morel. You know, what was done well that time was Jay Bolt maintaining his position, picking up the ball, playing quickly in the attack, and that's why the Ospreys had a chance. Off Cashin of North Florida, so now back to FGCO, under four minutes to play in half number one. You get a look at Derek Marinados, again, fourth year head coach of the Ospreys. In the final for back-to-back -back seasons after one win in his first season three years ago. He has done a great job building the program, just putting the pieces in place. He's very, very positive guy. He believes in his players. And the result of players believe in him. He says he can trust anybody coming off that bench. This is a North Florida team that either in the offseason or at the start of this year lost four players due to injury, and they have found their way to the final and been stronger, although... Again, really kept in check by FGCU to this point in this final. Four players who probably would have started. Nick May had started previously in the program. Nick Schuster, the German in the midfielder. Pedro Carnera there attacking forward. And Casey Coronas, captain and staunch defender in the middle of the back. Ingham getting a couple more touches since the FGCU goal. And now the Eagles trying to build, and North Florida trying to at least pressure some and look for an equalizer. Here's D'Souza. Very dangerous. Five goals on the year. One of the top goal scorers in FGCU history. In fact, one off the school record. 18 in his career. D'Souza, though, slides down there. Couldn't find his footing. But FGCU maintains possession. And now able to turn the corner. And Malumba steps forward. Very well done. It's a great play by Teddy Malumba, who's been a tower of strength for North Florida's defense all season long. Sudwa, who had the goal, steps up, makes the play, and now off his line, Nasta. And the flag was up. Smart play by that time by Malumba. And this is a good run coming forward. And uh, you see it earlier, the tackle by Malumba, who <laughs> keyed the offside trap on the very next sequence. FGCU trying to mount another run. D'Souza with Malumba, who got his left foot in there. And here's Camilo Garcia. And that foul will be called on FGCU. Oh, look at that. So Teddy Malumba asserting himself a little bit. He said, hey, get away from the ball. Teddy Malumba's played all over the park for Derek Marinados. This is a foul taken down, very obvious foul. Garcia being tripped in the middle of the park that time by Saravia, and Malumba comes in and says, get away from the ball, we want to play. Malumba's getting involved in the game. He's a rough, tough guy. He's played all over the park. He may start to come forward out of the back. So let me take over. Derek Marinados calls him almost an intimidating player. Here comes D'Souza trying to make one last run for FGCU, already up a goal here in the final minute one of half minute. number one. one I don't know about intimidating, but I wouldn't want to meet him in a dark alley or when I'm bringing the ball forward, attacking their defense either. Run not time for Morell there, who is almost skating toward the ball. And a goal kick coming up for North Florida. That's a very ambitious chance by Skyler Wilkes. I know we want to take shots from long range in the wet circumstances, but not from 75 yards. The odds are not good. Well, here comes Madrid. But again, Malumba, with some help from Quirino, able to play it out. Alex Morel in the middle of the park, wide to Garcia. But sliding forward to make a nice tackle in the play was Guillen. And now FGCU has it with 10 seconds to go and a one goal lead. Eight, seven, six, five, four, and we move three, to intermission five, in the Atlantic Sun Men's Soccer Championship. FGCU up 1-0 on the goal by Will Sudois. 
And FGCU was up by one goal before, and Derek Marinato has had to make some adjustments. I like the and adjustments the that he's made. Soutois putting his team on top, but they've got a tough second half, and let's see what kind of adjustments the Ospreys will make against the Eagles. There's Bob Budenhorn, head coach of FGCU. We hope to get him before we go to break here. He is on his way. Obviously, he has to be pleased with the way his side has been here in half number one for sure. They have certainly been very tough, and they've, they've imposed their will. Well, they're a good possession team, and they've not allowed the weather conditions to dissuade them from playing the way that they want to play. They have a lot of depth. They have a lot of people that can handle the ball. Bob Budohorn's done an excellent job of using his personnel thus far. Again, Will Soudois with the strike from just outside the 18, his first goal of the year. It came with 12 minutes to play in our first half, and that is the difference but North Florida again in the regular season came back from a goal down twice to tie a two. Again, FGCU scoring there. They were knocked out in the semis last year by North Florida by a 2-1 score. Again, Bob Unhorn joining us downstairs. Bob, what were you, what's your take on the first half? Well, it was a little bit of a tentative first half for I think UNF they they look a little bit uh, out of it and I think we just kind of were, were aggressive in our approach um, and kept to try try to keep the pressure up on them but you can see they can counter pretty quickly so uh, first half was just what I thought it was going to be I was glad to get a goal um, good goal by Will but you know we're, we're going to keep the pressure on and see if we can get another one. Bob, you seem to discover something down that right side. Maybe you want him playing in front of you, but tacking down that right produced a result, and then Will brought that ball inside for the shot at the top of the box. Yeah, I think uh, the right side seemed to be the fortunate one on this one, but uh, in general, I think we were we were finding access, you know, through the midfield and also in the, in the width. So um, it just happened to be the right side that time, and Will made a great decision and a good goal. Bob, good luck in the second half. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, guys. Again, that's Bob Budenhorn, head coach of Florida Gulf Coast University. They're 45 minutes away from a championship thanks to this goal by Will Soudois. We continue with halftime activities from Nashville, Tennessee right after this. You're watching the A-Sun Championship in men's soccer on ESPN3. Five years, the Atlantic Sun Conference has supported its member institutions in their commitment to the hard work, dedication, and determination of building winners for life. As the A-Sun aggressively seeks to expand opportunities, its student athletes and the institutions they represent stand among the nation's best in academics, athletics, and service to their communities. At the A-Sun, the aim is the successful balance of student and athlete. The Atlantic Sun Conference, at its best, building winners for life. An eagle is not a what, you know, an eagle is a spirit, a spirit of community involvement, a spirit of academic excellence, a spirit of service. The best thing about UNF is the diversity. I just love the fact that I can come here and intermingle with people from all over the world. I'm Robert Allen. I'm an honor student here at the University of North Florida in Jacksonville. We have smaller classes. But they're longer now and, and a little bit more demanding, but it's for our benefit. My experience with the professors is that they are very open. Here at UNF, you can receive a solid education. UNF, no one like you, no place like this. In five years, the Atlantic Sun Conference has supported its member institutions in their commitment to the hard work, dedication, and determination of building winners for life. As the A-Sun aggressively seeks to expand opportunities, its student athletes and the institutions they represent stand among the nation's best in academics, athletics, and service to their communities. At the A-Sun, the aim is the successful balance of student and athlete. The Atlantic Sun Conference, at its best, building winners for life. Welcome back to Nashville, Tennessee on the campus of Lipscomb University, Florida Gulf Coast University over North Florida, 1-0. 
and they really had the pressure on the entire first half, Richard. They've been dominant. I know that Derek Marinatos is very concerned about the possession that Florida Gulf Coast University has, and they have not been able to deny possession and Florida Gulf Coast making the most of it. They finally started to take some chances, though, getting forward and driving the ball. The first 20 minutes, they didn't take many shots, and finally they start to shoot on goal, and they, not on target right away, but eventually they're going to hurt the, hurt the team when they do. This is a chance by Stephen Oliveri and a fine save by Kyle Nasta coming off the line. And eventually it's going to pay off because Will Suda coming forth from his right side across the left side and Sudwa drills in the back of the net to put the Eagles on top. And that's why Florida Gulf Coast University has a one goal lead. North Florida looking for its first come from behind win since October 28th. And they've got to do that to try and win a title. Again, one nothing. The Eagles in front. We continue after this on ESPN3. Kittle hits that first time. I don't think Sturdum had his chance. Well, Wacker. But that didn't make any effect. Kittle hits that first time. I don't think Sturdum had his chance. Well, Wacker able to find Tindall now on a breakaway. She'll get us. Welcome back to rainy Nashville, Tennessee for the final in the men's soccer championship between Florida Gulf Coast University and North Florida. Florida Gulf Coast University, a one goal lead thanks to Will Sudois' strike with 12 minutes to play in half number one. Last week was the women's championship. It was played in Fort Myers under maybe not better conditions in terms of rain, but certainly a bit warmer between Florida Gulf Coast University and Kennesaw State. And it was the Tabby Tyndall show. Well, she's just a great player. She's got such poise going toward goal, and this time she played slots the ball low, and that right past the keeper has no chance, and her next goal is even a better goal. It's very hard when you're running with the ball, be able to play the ball and knock it over a goalkeeper, but she chips the goalkeeper that time, 2-0. She's just a brilliant, brilliant player. Tabby Tyndall, that's a name to remember. 20 goals now in the season. Kennesaw State had an answer, though. They did. They kept coming and kept fighting, and, and a rare slip up in the back causes this ball to be drilled into the back of the net. And Kennesaw State coming back on, making it two to one, but Jim Blankenship's club is just really tough, and they keep applying the pressure. And this time, Tyndall sets up her teammate, and Tabby Tyndall just all over the park and just just a dominant player. They're going to be a force in the NCAA tournament. Well, FGCU made it. They got a home game yesterday. Unfortunately, were knocked out by Auburn 1-0 as Tabby Tyndall, the talented striker, was injured 20 minutes in and did not return. So they didn't have their best player, but they certainly had a terrific year. Hats off to Jim Blankenship and the FGCU Eagles. They finished the year 17-4 and, and the champions on the women's side. 
FGCU looking for a double in the Atlantic Sun on the men's side. They lead it one nothing at the break over North Florida. We return to Nashville, Tennessee after this on ESPN3. Back in Nashville, Tennessee, Neil Solons and Richard Broad for the men's championship in Atlantic Sun Soccer. And so far, it's FGCU trying to win for the third time in four years. Richard Broad, this has been a first half dominated by the Eagles. So what adjustments does North Florida make? When they played earlier in the season, Derek Marinautis went into halftime and he really read his players the riot act. He said, we've got to get busy. We've got to go to work. They have been thoroughly dominated, much more than I think Derek Marinata thought they would be. They did make that change, moving Jay Bolt to the left side, and he's shut down that attack against the Eagles against them was so effective in the first half. Are there any other adjustments you think that North Florida will make for half number two? One thing I'd like to see them try is move Helga Peachman up top. He can play up top. He's a forward by training. He can play in the midfield. He had none of the game. He just seemed to struggle and slip and slide all over this muddy field. They've got to involve Peachman. He's the key to their attack. Maybe they move him up front in the second half. Tough day to play. Certainly the winner of this championship has earned a bid to the NCAAs. We have some fine athletes and scholar athletes on both sides. Let's take a look at the scholar athletes first for FGCU and North Florida. Kyle Nasta has allowed the only goal so far, but it really was a terrific goal by Will Soudois. He's an outstanding student, and the same is true for Stephen Oliveri, one of the maestros in the middle. He's played very well in a holding midfield spot today. Oliveri's had an excellent first half, keeping possession for the Eagles. Kyle Nasta has been brilliant all season long. There's nothing he could have done about that great shot by Soudois. Today's Scholar Athlete Spotlight, sponsored by asunstore.com, your best choice for ASUN apparel and gear. We'll come back with the second half. It's FGCU and North Florida. Championship men's soccer. We continue after this on ESPN3.
Back in Nashville, Tennessee for the start of second half play between FGCU and North Florida playing for an NCAA tournament bid. FGCU scoring 12 minutes from the end of half number one on a strike by Will Sudwa just outside the 18. Sudwa is on the pitch. Changes for North Florida in their second half starting lineup. Basically, Richard, they've started with the same group that finished half number one. Well, they want to see if Jay Bolt can lock down this, this attack down the right side, uh, down North Florida's left side, playing very aggressively. And the whole team's coming out with much more aggression. I'm not surprised to see that. Derek Marinotis, Derek Marinotis knows they can't just sit back and let Florida Gulf Coast University have all the play as they did in the first half. That was Camille Garcia trying to get it on to one of his forwards, unable to connect. FGCU with the counter. And a terrific job to knock that one away. Kyle Nastor, though, with a challenge, challenged early here. And this is great work by Philippe de Souza getting down the flank. And they are very lucky that Nastor comes out and challenges, but that shot is just wide. And an early goal by the Eagles would have made it awfully tough on the Ospreys in the second half. It was Isaiah Madrid with the terrific run on the ball by de Souza. Both came on after the goal was scored in half number one and staying on for half number two. North Florida picking up the tempo. They just sat back way too much and they're moving the ball quicker and they're putting more pressure on the Eagles when they have possession. But D'Souza able to steal it away. The risk you run by putting up the pressure high is you open yourself up in other parts of the field. And if they do, they give the chance for those quick players to get in the attack. One of the things that Bob Buhorn, Buhorn has is very, very good depth. You've got Isaiah Madrid, number 17 on the right side, coming off the bench. He's a second team all-conference performer. Bob Buhorn trained at Maryland. He, he, he learned the craft under two very, very good coaches, Alden Shattuck and Sasha Sarovsky has done a great job there for the last 20 years. And one of the qualities of Maryland is a team that always had depth and always put pressure on the opposition. You know, taking a look on the field here in the second half, Sly Shashenowicz is on the pitch, it appears, for North Florida. I thought he was done for the year with a hamstring injury, so obviously he's come back for the final. He had not played in the tournament to this point number 12 for North Florida. He has been limited by that hamstring injury, but he is playing. And what this does is allow them to put Christopher Bush up higher up the field and combine in there with Garcia in the midfield. Shoshana, which has been a defender most of his career, but he's done a good job for them as a holding midfielder. When he doesn't have to run quite as much, he can be very effective covering that territory in front of the defense. It appears North Florida has kept their shape, 4-4-2. They have, but they're getting Bush higher up the field. He's an aggressive player. They need to get more possession. And when Christopher Bush has the ball, he doesn't give it up. You can see them trying to pressure out high there with Garcia and Sprague. Trying to lead to less possession for FGCU and create a quick strike opportunity. But here's Sudwa onto the ball for FGCU. I would not be surprised, Neil, though, if we see Peachman coming on and coming on up top. He is their dangerous player. He's the man that makes the thing makes the engine run and they need him in the game somewhere maybe not in the midfield maybe up top Madrid on side finding Sudwa Sudwa who already has scored once his first strike of the year unable to come up with that cleanly and Quirino able to jump in Sudwa kind of lost his footing a little bit too Will Sudwa, a very clever player. You saw him come inside, strike that ball with the left foot. This time, goes around to the right. He's very dangerous out wide. He's doing the kind of things out on the flanks for the Eagles that North Florida is going to need Alex Morrell to do on the other flank for the Ospreys. Morrell staying in that wide right position as North Florida trying to get some numbers. Again, to this point, they really have not challenged Nate Ingham, the keeper for North Florida. Malumba has to quickly play it to Bolt as FGCU challenging in the back. And now long ball ahead. 
Sprague unable to get to that 50-50, but North Florida will keep on the throw. And that pressure is effective. Sprague putting pressure on the defender, and he knocks the ball out of bounds. And the possession has been disrupted a little bit by this North Florida pressure. It will go to FGCU as Bolt lost it on the sideline. Rain continues. It basically has rained since the start. Temperature 39 or 40 degrees, depending on which point of the match we're at. A very raw, wet day. I'm chatting with John Roberts, associate commissioner for the Atlantic Sun. He cannot remember a worse day for a championship in any sport weather-wise that they've had. I think you were saying it. Bob Butehorn said he could not remember a worse day, and that's really the, the, the semifinal, that's really saying something, is he was at St. Bonaventure for a number of years, and it's not exactly balmy and only in New York most of the time. No. It's, it feels closer to the North Pole when you're up there than it does anywhere else. But we've had the semifinals were played around 30 degree weather, and today balmy by comparison, but certainly not great conditions for two Florida teams who are battling it out for a berth in the NCAAs. FGCU maintained possession a great deal in half number one, and here in the second half trying to add to it. Sudois onto that ball very well to keep it in play. And now Kamar Marriott, standout freshman, finding a target forward in space, seeking Madrid, and now sent long and away. It's not enough just to knock that ball long and get it out of there. They've got to establish possession and generate more attack. He said several times, Neil, Ingham has not been tested at all. As we're now 52 minutes in, most often when he's had to punt it away, he has found Sudwa on the flank. He handles it so brilliantly right near the sideline. And there's a beautiful touch up ahead. Here comes D'Souza in space. Nasta trying to cut the angle, and D'Souza slipped and fell. That's a break for North Florida. Really was a break. And again, they're, they're, the pressure they're trying to put on, they can't be over eager and diving into the balls. Another thing that Derek Marinata's stressed, they've got good players on Florida Gulf Coast University. Don't dive in, be patient, and try never to get exposed 1v1. That happened that time. They were very fortunate that D'Souza fell down as he went to strike that ball. North Florida heads it out. And a quick strike by Oliveri, well wide and over the top. And again, worth a chance, though. If you get it in the right spot, you get a deflection, you get the goalkeeper to mishandle the ball. I like the way that the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles have gone about this game. They have stayed with their style. They've played quickly. They've developed the attack. Bob Butehorn's done a splendid job getting them ready for this match. Teddy Malumba stepping up. On the second ball off the 50-50. And a slide, Shoshenowitz, I guess, is going to be called for the foul there. This is kind of an unusual call. Shoshenowitz had the ball, it got away from him a little bit, and he wasn't really trying to go in and commit a foul that time. But the ball just gets away from his feet. As he goes in, he takes down um, Soudois. Soudois, and Soudois is hobbling a little bit. And again, I, I don't think Bob Butehorn wants to see that. Uh, he's been a dynamic player out wide on the flank. <laughs> Well, here's North Florida off the restart. The rain is really starting to pick up, too. I'm actually surprised we haven't seen any slip-ups that have led to a goal, either because a defender falls down or because a goalie slipped. Well, let's hope you haven't spoken too soon about this, and the weather's chased a lot of people away. Again, the home team, Lipscomb, not being in here. And um, the last few tournaments have all been down at, in Fort Myers at Florida Gulf Coast University because they've dominated the regular season and hosted the game. Here's D'Souza onto the ball with some space. Taken down, no call. Wanted the foul right outside the box or just inside, perhaps. That was very, very close. And again, these slippery conditions. That's what happens. Defenders slip and they make mistakes. And that very easily could have been called for penalty in that particular situation. Again, D'Souza going in there. And, and that's a dive in by Pedroia. And it very, very easily could have been a foul in the penalty box and a penalty kick. Now North Florida trying to get some sort of attack going. FGCU has been quicker to the ball today, and they've certainly handled the conditions a bit better as Malumbo would now at the throw in for North Florida, but not before some substitutions will occur for the Ospreys. 
Ospreys talk about their depth, and Derek Marinato said he has trust in a lot of his players, and he is using that depth. In the second half, you can have a re-entry, so these players that are coming off now can come back on. Kovacs can come back on. He's coming off there. Sprague can come back on, and they've really emptied their bench, and that depth is going to be important. It's a team effort for the Ospreys, and this is really testing the team concept, bringing all these people on. Well, we get our first look to it. Dimitri Zervos will play up front some. He came on for Sprague. Garrett Cox also entered in the midfield for North Florida. They brought in four new players at that whistle. Serve a strong, quick player. He can give them some more possession in the attacking end. Here's Camille Garcia. And a one-hopper is handled near post by Ingham. And that's the best chance so far. And you saw Ingham struggle a little bit to make sure of his footing. Jay Bolt with the chest trap, trying to keep it in the FGCU end. A good run. Here comes Zervos, first touch. Couldn't get it back. And now the counter by FGCU. Sudwa, the only ball in the back of the net so far as his pass knocked away by Big Teddy Malumba. And now a late foul called on FGCU. North Florida will get the free kick as Garcia with a dive. Garcia has added an element of creativity and skill as he's come off the bench. Very effective work thus far by the Colombian. Is he kind of a low gravity player like Echeverry on the other side? Maybe not as skilled or technical? Once again, we're finding more and more of these low gravity types. I think when you get a rainy climbs and you're playing in a rainy area like Portland or Seattle out there, they're going to get those low gravity players. I think that's a great theory, Neil, and we're seeing it happen. Peachman's not been back on for North Florida. I think they have to give him a shot. He's just too dangerous a player. They're going to have to bring him on and see what happens. Let's see how these subs do for North Florida. There's Zervos. Wide right slot. Unable to come up with anything cleanly, and now the ball reversed to Jay Bolt. Very good challenge by Oliveri, and now Sudwa. On to Kovacs, here comes Bolt with a bit of a run down the flank. Good ball up ahead. And we mentioned Peachman. He's back in the game. He came in with those masses. I think maybe they sent so many players in, they didn't want Bob Butehorn to see that he was coming in. But Peachman is back in. He's in in the midfield where he's more comfortable. Marriott with good defense there in the push called on Simon Solstad. Sudwa, who's been all over the field today, the most maybe one of the best players on the pitch today. Up ahead to Sousa. And Nasta able to knock it away and cleared by Malumba for a moment. There's Saravia. FGCU with the only goal and the best chances all throughout the match. Oliveri sends it wide. And now was that an offside call? It was an offside call on the far side. Looked like uh, D'Souza was just a little bit offside. We're seeing a type of game that I thought we'd see. It's opening up now. It's becoming a lot faster pace. It's been dictated by North Florida. Derek Marinonis has said, we're not winning this game now. We're going to get beat. We're going to throw our best effort at him. And his team has responded. They're playing with a lot more energy, a lot more passion. Maybe not as skillfully as they'd like, but they're putting much more pressure on the Eagles. Mar Marriott, long pass taken by Bolt. Madrid onto it, here comes Albert Ruiz. Ruiz went down, ball stays with FGCU as he went off North Florida. Very aggressive play that time by Teddy Malumba, and I think he, it's gonna be whistled for a foul in this situation. It's Ruiz has it, Malumba goes right through Ruiz even though he got the ball. I would consider that a foul, and they're thinking maybe possibly about a caution. Teddy Malumba's passion, he plays very, very hard. We said before, he's played up in different positions. I would not be surprised, maybe not now, with 30 minutes to go, but if they can't get the, if they can't get the lead back, North Florida might throw him forward and get him in the attack, use his aggressiveness. He seems to really want to be out there. He's playing as hard as anybody on the Ospreys. Again, winner of this championship moves on to the NCAAs for FGCU. They're seeking their third in four years. UNF, meanwhile, is trying to win their first automatic qualifier, not only in men's soccer, but it would be their first in the Atlantic Sun Conference. 
would be in Florida Gulf Coast University used to being here. And we talked about there. That's why they've been the host so many times. And one of the people I've seen, I saw before the match was Ken Cavanaugh, the athletic director at Florida Gulf Coast University, came up for this match. And love the way they support their teams at that school. It's a, it's a new school. It's on the rise. They've got two outstanding soccer programs, Bob Butorn's program and then the women's program, Jim Blankenship. We're getting a look again at that foul on Albert Ruiz. He was a little nicked up going into the game. He's hobbling off, but it looks like he's going to be okay. So Ruiz battling through. You mentioned FGCU, terrific athletic program. Their volleyball team was the number two seed, and they're gonna play in the upcoming championship, which will take place on campus November 20th through the 22nd. Every round of the championship will be carried live here on ESPN3. I think I know who's gonna be covering that. I have an inkling too, as Nasta off his line, able to knock that one away. In danger averted for the time being. As we're now into the 60th minute of the match, the first two thirds thoroughly controlled by the Eagles, the number two seed. Here's Jay Bolt with a bit of a run. He's become more active and able to find Garcia. Now back to Bolt inside the 18, but sends it just wide. And I'll tell you one thing, if they don't win this game, it won't be because of lack of effort of Jay Bolt. That guy is just a tiger. He comes comes to play every day, and he leaves it on the field. He started out playing on the right side. He's moved to the left side. And what that's enabled him to do is move Simon Solstad into more of an attacking position. He struggled defensively, Solstad, in the first half. But, but he has that powerful left foot, and he can cause problems. He gets a hold of a ball, gets a shot in the attacking third. He can even this game up very quickly. North Florida needs to keep the pressure on, again, looking for the equalizer in this championship match. And they will maintain possession here. Again, Jay Bolt. They've made a couple of nice runs in the second half. Jay Bolt is an absolute warrior. There's just no quit in that guy whatsoever. Good job stepping up by Felipe de Sousa for FGCU and now finding Madrid and here's Sudwa, the lone goal of the match on the run with some space on the right flank. Cuts and his left foot is well off the mark. Kind of skidded near the top of the 18. And now North Florida seeking the counter with Camillo Garcia. We've seen that left foot before, but Sudwa not, not as accurate as he was on the goal in the first half. Samayoya. Stepping up from his center back position. Carino has to head it back for Nasta. Standout keeper of the year. Certainly has been tested an awful lot today. He has poised defending by Carino, the captain. He's been very sought along with Malumba in the back. As we're now down to 28 minutes and change in the match. FGCU again on a Will Soudois first half goal. The lone goal to this point. This is Zervos. North Florida trying to build. Onto it, Peachman. In for Bolt. Zervos couldn't get a foot on it. Sent wide, and Solstad could not run it down, but it will stay with the Ospreys. And another terrific effort by Jay Bolt, chesting that ball down. He's in the attack again, and Jay Bolt's been the inspiration for the Ospreys in the second half. North Florida wanted a foul, none called. FGCU now with the possession. Madrin sends it away. Look like Ruiz is still bothered. Right near midfield, he's down on one knee. He went up against a very tough customer in Teddy Malum, and you said you used the word intimidating for him in the first half. You could see why after that tackle on Ruiz. Very intimidating. You don't want to meet him anywhere. North Florida has been fairly stout in the back, despite the athletic ability of FGCU, but they've just been able to find that one conversion. They have three very solid 
Uh, they, they, they have two very solid defenders in the middle and two guys on the outside have done a good job. And that substitution, that adjustment by Derek Marinados in the first half has changed this game around. Jay Bold is anchored down the left side. He's a very good one-on-one -on -one defender. And they've, they've gotten good work from Pedroza on the right side. And those two center defenders, very, very solid. We see the substitution coming on. The littlest man on the field coming back in, but he's dangerous. Echeverry coming back in in the midfield. They probably drop in and they'll push some other players up top. And the substitution that was mentioned, Echeverry on, the key player who's helped out in the back, Christian Pedroza, allowing Jay Bolt to move from the right to the left back slot. He's typically a midfield player, but his ability to play in the defense has changed things. FGCU with the steal, the transition. Here's Echeverry. And Nasta off his line right outside, the right near the top of the 18. Excellent goalkeeping by Nasta. Again, a lot of times the best things that goalkeepers do are deny chances. Nasta coming well out in the penalty box, not allowing the opponent to get a shot on goal. Zervos wanted Solstad to stay where he was and then allow him to stay in that target forward position and get it back. That's one of the problems you have when you substitute frequently. You lose a little bit of that understanding that players have and develop. Again, that depth is very, very important for the Ospreys, but um, you do lose some continuity by frequent, uh, over-frequent substitution. And there's Zervos and Solstad again. Couldn't get the timing right. <laughs> Frustration on the part of Zervos, who's a little bit unfamiliar with his teammates, and the timing is even harder on these wet conditions. Rain continues to fall as it has done throughout the entire match. Once again, nothing down the right side for Florida Gulf Coast University because of the job that Jay Bolt's doing, solidifying that defense. An excellent substitution, changing the course of the game. And again, they've had many, many opportunities down that right flank in the first half. They've had none have the Eagles the second half. This is Shesenowitz for Bolt. Good challenge by Sudwa, and it goes to FGCU. Boy, that was well done. Very well done. Got the deflection off Bolt that time, and Sudwa has worked back well on defense, having a fine game for Bob Butehorn. Again, we're in Nashville, Tennessee, on the campus of Lipscomb University for the championship in men's soccer between FGCU and North Florida. The two and the four seeds. FGU scored with 12 minutes to go in half number one on a strike by Will Sudwa. The only goal we've had in the match. If you're wondering why this is in Nashville, it's because Lipscomb, eliminated by North Florida, was the top seed and therefore got to host. Here's Peachman. Not been real active to this point to Zervos in space. Zervos has to send it back. And North Florida will have to reset. Pedroza now two Peachman, and his long feet for Solstad is knocked away, and Marriott will run it toward the corner. And I think that went off of Marriott, and it'll be a corner for North Florida. Rare opportunity for a set piece. Let's see if they can make the most of it. Again, they didn't do very well with these in the first half, but they've got Solstad in there, they've got Peachman in there, and they're bringing up, I think, Let's see who they're going to bring up with. Not bringing up Teddy Malumbo. A little surprise at that. Camille Garcia with the set piece. Shoshenowitz couldn't get it down. And it's a goal kick for FGCU. He brought in Diago Carino to get ahead on the ball. I'd like to see them bring Malumbo forward. He's been very aggressive. And sometimes as a coach, you want to take advantage of that aggressiveness and shake things up. They've got 25 minutes, though, and uh, they're trying to stay with what they've got in there. Shoshenowitz has done a nice job in defensive midfield position in the second half. Again, we're in Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, my country music. I don't know if there was a rainy soccer Sunday song that's ever been done, but it certainly would be apt. It certainly would be very <laughs> appropriate. North Florida looking for an equalizer. They want to make this a soggy, sad Sunday for them. Again, playing their third match in five days and trying to win their first championship in the Atlantic Sun. 
We have 25 minutes to solve this very, very tough Florida Gulf Coast University defense. They're regarded as an attacking team, but their defense has been the strength of the team all year. Ingham, the uh, fewest goals allowed in the conference. And among the top 20 teams in the country in terms of goals allowed per game, only 14 for the season. And this is why Derek Marinato's strategy in the second half to put more pressure on is a wise one. You just can't sit back and hope to get one or two chances and score against a team as good as Florida Gulf Coast University is defensively. As much rain as this field has taken in the last 12 hours, it does seem to have slackened off a bit. But it's much more treacherous and just one slip up on defense, and that's why you put the pressure on the opponents. See if they'll make a mistake. Nice ball by Zervos for Garrett Cox, who slipped and knocked it out of bounds. Good energy by the substitutes for North Florida. Garrett Cox coming off, getting some good work by Camilo Garcia. Solstead coming back in, doing a good job as a substitute coming off the bench in the second half. And again, Pedroza filling that spot on the right side of the defense. Quirino playing it in. Good touch for Peachman. Has struggled to find his footing. And there, Oliveri on to it. Throw in for North Florida. Midway through the second half now. Nice job by Ingham off his line, looking toward the far post for Simon Solstad. Trying to find Solstad in the air. He's a good player with his head. That ball flighted straight into the center of the box. Goalkeeper's comfort zone. That's very easy play for Ingham. North Florida had scored 12 goals in their previous three matches. Against Stymied so far, here's Isaiah Madrid. Nice run toward the top of the box, but D'Souza sends it well long. It's a good run by Madrid down the right side. And Bolt wasn't back that time, and he's had to get forward in the attack. And this time, they're left a little bit exposed. Shishenowitz doesn't get out there, and D'Souza hitting that ball well over the bar. You want to keep the ball down anyway on the ground. Got to have more discipline than that. Kyle Nasta to take the goal kick. Meanwhile, Sudwa, I don't know if he had cramped up or hurt his leg. It looks like a cramp. I think it was a cramp. He's done a lot of running. He's not been a 90-minute player for Bob Butehorn all the season, and he may be coming off fairly soon. Derek Gephardt, I think, has started to loosen up on the sideline for FGCU. As North Florida trying to build some semblance of an attack and get the equalizer. Dimitri Zervos has played a nice little two-player game there with Garcia, but unable to connect on that pass. And now Madrid, yet another run. He's on sides. And sends it just wide. Oh, Kyle Nasta. It looked like he had the angle covered. That was a terrific run and shot by Madrid. It certainly was, and that's why Isaiah Madrid made second team all conference, even though he doesn't start, comes off the bench and provides activity like that. Nasta getting down very quickly. The ball goes just wide of the far post. No, well, Madrid now will depart for Gephardt after really two terrific runs. Well, you need to get fresh legs on. Bob Butehorn has good depth on his team, and I'm surprised they're not making a substitution out here for Will Soudoua, who seems to be hurting. We've been watching him. He's been holding his leg. That They probably would not bring a player like Gebhardt out wide or back in that wide flank defensive position. Uh, he's more of a forward. Now the steal by FGCU, and they transition again. Soudoua is controlling. And his pass for Saravia knocked away, but FGCU maintains possession, and they'll send it back to Ingham, where North Florida will try and press. Zervos there with the challenge. Sudwa again finds it to his foot. Gephardt almost lost to Malumba there. Malumba gets it back for North Florida. FGCU continues to challenge nearly every pass of North Florida. And they continue to handle most of the possession in this match. They have a very skillful midfield. That combination of Oliveri and Saravia is very, very tough to break down in the middle of the park. Well, one thing we saw from FGCU last year when they were eliminated in the semifinals is that they were a team that could lose their composure. They have certainly maintained composure throughout this match. A much more mature team. 
It's what Bob Butehorn has stressed all year, discipline and composure, and it's paying off today. They are 20 minutes from a conference championship right now, unless North Florida can come up with an answer. Jay Bolt, who scored his first goal of the season in the quarterfinal match. Has had a couple of runs here in the finals. And now it looks like Echeverry is shaken up a little bit. Him or Sudois? Is it Sudois? Sudois is almost grabbing the back of his leg. You would think that's not a cramp, but a hamstring. Yeah, I would think so, too. He's been really struggling the last 10 minutes. I'm surprised they haven't subbed him out. I think he's going to be done for the day. He gets a shake of the hand from uh, Randy Cook, the head official. And I think he may be done for the day. He's done great work for the Eagles. Well, he certainly has done his work. 71 minutes in, his team again up a goal. As you can see him touching his right hamstring there, Luis Vega will come on. And this is important, I've been really key substitution. Vega has been a starter at this wide right flank position. And as you mentioned, Neil, they have five defenders almost, but those two outside players, Wilk and Soudois, and now Vega can get forward in the attack. But Vega is a good player defensively. That's his strength, and it's a move that they had to make, but I think it'll be a good one. Not a real good punt, and it leads to Zervos almost with a chance at the 18, but he slipped. After really, I think Ingham slipped on his punt. And now the counter by Gephardt for FGCU. Gephardt with some space and a nice run. Bull takes him down, good tackle. Peachman slips it through to Garcia. Now long lead for Bolt. He is on side as he gets wide left. Service toward the box. Garcia gets a foot, slides it far post and got the post. North Florida still with the attack going. And it goes over the end line. It'll be a goal kick for FGCU. That was the chance of the match for North Florida. All started with a great effort coming forward by Jay Bolt. They found him going down the flank. And once again, Ingham is very much tested here. The ball's flighted in, the rebound, the second ball comes out to Camilo Garcia. Great effort by Ingham. He can't get there and the ball goes off the post. He needed to be to the inside of the post rather than the outside. Very, Inches very close. An equalizer. Plenty of players slipping as NASTA controls for North Florida. Seen that before. Sometimes the end of these Eagles forwards getting through and falling down. They haven't been able to keep their feet in a couple critical situations. Again, rain throughout not only the match, but really since about midnight. So it's been raining for a good 12 hours plus as Bolt puts a right foot on it, but well wide. A little bit of it sign of desperation from Jay Bolt that time he'd been better served to keep keep possession of the ball and try to get the ball in front of the goal as he did once before. And now we have Felipe D'Souza limping off for FGCU as well. So D'Souza hurt, Sudwa hurt, FGCU with their depth tested in this championship match. Took the words right out of my, out of my mouth, Neil. They, they certainly have to rely on these substitutes coming on. Looks like D'Souza has pulled something as well. And uh, I, I think this is uh, David, Robledo. David Robledo coming on. And they've used almost everybody on that bench of the Eagles and North Florida bringing on some more substitutes. I think it's going to be Morrell possibly coming on. And uh, Bold is getting a bit of a rest. He looks a little bit tired. Adrian DeMello will make his first appearance of the match at left back. It's not Morrell, it's Kovacs coming on up front, but Alex Morrell is on on the right side and he's dangerous. He can attack people with a ball and it's a tired injury riddled team at Florida Gulf Coast University as out there now. Again, up one nothing on the Sudois strike with 12 minutes to go in the first half. North Florida the last 10 minutes has gotten the better of this. They've gotten the better of the second half, really, and it's been that aggressive strategy by Derek Marinados. But they've got to find a way to get the ball into the back and get it on, in, into the net. Kovacs was trying to move forward down the flank. He had scored in each of the last three matches entering to today. Really hasn't had a good chance, though, for a strike this afternoon. 12 goals, I think it is, in the last three games, and none today. Boy, I... Derek Marinatis wishes he could take a couple of those and transfer him to this game, but they're going against a very, very good defensive opponent. 
credit to FGCU. They certainly have been stand up defensively and maintain possession in the midfield today. That's really where I think they've won this game, Richard, to this point. I would agree with that. And the key is not his ability to shut down Helga Peachman. He's just struggled so much in these wet conditions out here. But if he gets a hold of one shot, it'll be dangerous. And a little bit of a missed pass by Malumba. I would also, again, like to see Teddy Malumba getting forward, either on restarts or or maybe move him up. Uh, he's played there before, and he's very aggressive, and it, it, that indicates that his desire, he wants to get in the game. Malumba battling with Gephardt for the ball. Gephardt goes down, no call. Malumba sends it long, and a good lead ahead for Kovacs. Can't run onto it, though. The Semayoya able to send it away. That's a terrific play by Semioya, and I thought he, he did save that ball out of bounds. He regained his balance. The freshman is a very impressive player in the center of that defense. And Nicholas Semioya, the freshman from Guatemala, has made a big difference in the team. We're looking here at Teddy Malumba, and boy, is he powerful. He threw his arm back. I don't think that was a foul. It was inadvertent, and he's just so aggressive, and I'd like to see the Ospreys move him into the attack. He's just so physical. Well, Gephardt is still down from taking that strike. Now he's come to his feet, as you see. And it looks like he will stay in the match. Again, to Sousa and Sudwa already had departed. Here's another look. Gephardt's a big, strong fella. And uh, inadvertently, Malumba throws his hand. Not a not an intentional foul. And I think they just wanted to let that go. Echeverry now with the run. And a good run allowing FGCU to get possession here with 15 minutes to play. And again, they're nursing a one goal lead for a championship. And Echeverry seems to be nursing a little knock himself. He's down after that tackle by Shoshenowitz and they may be needing to sub him off there. Again, they're, they're, they're taking off Gebhardt and bringing on a substitution up front. Looks like um, possibly Madrid. And you can see there, again, Echeverry hobbling and boy, they're just hanging on, the Eagles are now. Battle there with Madrid, and it goes to North Florida. Hey, fans can follow the Atlantic Sun on Twitter and Facebook. Visit twitter.com slash Atlantic Sun to begin receiving updates on conference news, weekly awards, and a Sun Championships. Followers with a Facebook account can become a fan of the conference by visiting facebook.com slash Atlantic Sun Conference. DeMello couldn't get on to that ball for North Florida. FGCU 14 minutes from their third title in four years. One of the things that happens when you bring a sub on, he's been cold, he's fresh to Miller, just not quite able to get his balance and make a play on that ball and they lose possession. Freshman from Canada should be used to the cold weather. Certainly by any standard though, these are not favorable soccer conditions. Both teams have battled and I'd say handled it fairly well considering what they've had to deal with. FGCU looking for an extra strike to put them over the top. Madrid's run not timed quite well enough, and Nasta again off his line to handle. Done an outstanding job. He can't be faulted in the one goal, and he steadied the defense ever since. Helga Peachman with a nice steal in space. Now he and Sprague and Kovacs can't connect. The timing just not there. He's just struggling to get a possession of the ball. He's just battling to keep his balance even on the field as Peachman. North Florida looking to build from the back. Again, in the final 13 minutes of the match. And a reminder, this matchup, the A-Sun Championship, brought to you by our friends at asunstore.com. North Florida tied FGCU in the regular season. They're looking for the equalizer here in the championship. The winner goes to the NCAAs. Another quick counter. And here's Madrid, who's had a couple of nice runs so far. Malumba chasing. To the top of the box, Echeverry with the little space. And they're seeking Robledo, well defended by Quirino. Excellent defending by the captain, Diego Quirino. has been a steady player all season long for Derek Marinados. First team all conference player, Quirino. Senior who transferred in from Barton Community College. 
originally from Sao Paulo, Brazil. He scored a goal, did Carino, against FGCO in the regular season. Believe, as Jay Bolt back on. I believe that was off a restart situation. They're bringing Bolt back on the left side, and they want his energy and his competitiveness on, competitiveness on the field. And his ability perhaps to make a run, too, as he did that a couple of times in this half. He's been the most impactful player they've had in the second half. Here he comes forward. In space to Garcia. One touch and timing not there. And now Saravia down the flank to Vega. Vega for FGCU. Vega did not play in the semifinals. There he lost it. It will stay with the Eagles. North, North Florida did not quite agree. There's Vega with the throw in. Frustration on the face of Helga Peachman has had such a fine season. He's just not found his rhythm today. Nice ball by Robledo. Couldn't quite get Madrid in space. But FGCU, again, possession much of the match, controlling now. Good run by Echeverry. On to it. Nasta off his line, though, able to make the play. Foul on Echeverry. A yellow card or a red? Let's take a look at this. The quickness of Santiago Echeverry sliding in. He manages to catch Nasta coming in and I, it may have been a red card for charging the goalkeeper, but he was just simply making a play on the ball, and I, I, this is really an extreme call if he's gotten a red card. We'll see. I, I, thought, did, I, I thought I saw the red card raised. Did you? I think I did, too, unless I'm hallucinating out here, Neil. And Santiago Echeverry with a great run, showing his speed and quickness, trying to slip that ball by Kyle Nasta. Nasta made a great save on this play, and Echeverry coming in. I don't see how he could have stopped. I, maybe a yellow card in this situation. Look again. Look at the speed and pace of Echeverry trying to get to that ball. Nasta comes out. That's a play. Um, I don't see a card on this. Maybe, maybe a yellow card. He almost has the ball. He's trying to push it by Nasta, and it uh, is a red card. It's a red. He's gone. He went to the bench. And you can see Nasta bleeding. I, I, I think Echeverry also came kind of spikes high, too. They don't want to take Nasta out of the game, North Florida. They certainly don't. And sometimes you have to take players out when there's blood. And he's a, really a wounded warrior out there. Ten minutes now for North Florida. Get back in. A man up. And again, that's even if there's an equalizer, that's the way it would go throughout. No substitution after the red card. And if they can get a goal, that'll give them the extra time to get the winner. In space, North Florida. A man up, unable to come up with anything there. And Oliveri with a pretty good run for FGCU. They're trying to maintain possession. And time is now their ally. And a foul like that is going to also be their ally again. I think it was Peachman committing the foul out of frustration. As you pointed out, Neil, earlier, Oliveri has been a real pillar of strength alongside with Saravia in the midfield. But they, they're looking at Echeverry going off the pitch, and he's done for the day. And that's a huge loss, both Echeverry and the losing the, the, Injuries the extra man. Injuries and D'Souza before that, too. They are really depleted, and if they go to the tournament from here, Etcheberry will have to miss the first game. He's been such an important part of Bob Butehorn's attack. And as a senior, certainly that disappointing. The excitement of potentially going dancing, but then not having him. Nine minutes to play. Rain now picking up in intensity. Kamar Marriott, long ball for Vega. Shoshenowitz is there and will send it to his keeper, Kyle Nasta. It's amazing, this team, North Florida, that scored eight goals already in the tournament, not even able to get off a shot, and they're a man up. Camila Garcia catching the post about 10 minutes ago is really the closest chance they've had all day. That was a good chance. That's about the only one. Handball called on Jay Bolt. It goes to FGCU, and Bolt not really pleased. Not happy, but that's the right call. FGCU eight minutes away from a championship. 
North Florida hoping to get the equalizer. Battle won by North Florida in space. Here's Peachman. Sends it wide, Pedroza. Pedroza, a first half substitute, has stayed on since, and he's done a very nice job in the right back. Very steady, solidified that defense, made it much more reliable, and Florida Gulf Coast University has not had anything down the flanks that they had so much of in the first half. Beautiful job by Oliveri to challenge and win the ball for FGCO on the throw in. Saravia and Oliveri have been the difference in the midfield, as you said, Neil. Indeed. Very unique 5-2-3 system played by Bob Budhorn and company. It's something they changed to during the season when they weren't getting results, and it certainly has worked. A lot more teams are using that. It's very similar to some of the team that the international teams did in the World Cup, and a lot more teams are using it than, than ever were before. Here's Madrid in space to David Robledo. Now out wide, FGC almost playing keep away, looking for one last run. They send it. Aside, timing not there, but time on FGCU's side. You mentioned this five-back system. Of some teams have used it. Princeton, for one, started out with it in the Ivy League and really struggled. And they went back to a four-back system, and they've been very successful since. They're playing Yale this weekend for, the, to, for a chance to at least part of the Ivy title. Virginia has used it very effectively at times, although they haven't had quite as good a season this year. They've stuck with that three-back, actually five-defender system. Well, Peachman or Kovacs wanted a push in the back, none called, and it'll go back to North Florida. Hey, you can get all of your A-Sun news, statistics, and championship information at AtlanticSun.org. They are the official internet home of the Atlantic Sun Conference. North Florida is very, very frustrated. They have not been able to establish possession even with an extra man for the last few minutes. And they've got to get at least one chance. And if they get a restart, that's going to be important. They make much more effective use of it than they have thus far. Saravia's pass taken away by Alex Morel. Now Jay Bolt on the right side. Slides it forward to Garcia, who's had the most dangerous chance so far. Now some space for Morel. Back to Malumba, his left footer is blocked. Madrid on to it. Here comes FGCU running in space, three on three. Saravia, now down the flank for Madrid. Malumba though there. It goes to North Florida. And you finally saw Teddy Malumba getting forward. I don't know if he's been changed in position at all, but he's getting into the attack and his aggressiveness and power can maybe make a difference for them. They're just not having the goals create opportunities created by finesse. Well, they almost have to send as much forward as they can. Hope to get some sort of, they haven't really have many set piece opportunities this half. It's been stifled, that good midfield play as we've talked about before has been the key for the Eagles this afternoon. Now into the 86th minute. Neil Solons and Richard Broad, FGCU last year stymied by North Florida in the semifinals in Fort Myers, playing in rainy Nashville, Tennessee, and four and a half minutes from a title. And stymied is the right word. They have just been shut down. They really only had that one good chance by Garcia about 15 minutes ago. Simon Solstad with a very strong left foot, sliding a two left footer Teddy Malumba. Now to Garcia. Garcia knocked by Guillen. Bolt sends it toward the six, but nobody to get a head or a foot on it. And that ball needed to be crossed, not sent directly in on the goal. A good goalkeeper like Nathan Ingham is not going to be beaten by that. You've got to get the ball across, and I'd like to see him get it to the far post. And on this, maybe not as wide pitch as FGCU plays on at home, Ingham just sending it long. Again, time his ally. And the longer he sends it, the longer it takes North Florida to settle and build the attack. In a way, the size of this pitch has actually, actually helped FGC, FGCU that today because they haven't had to cover as much ground, especially when they've been a man down. Here's Garcia. Morell one touch. Timing not there, and Ingham again off his line to cover. 
Morrell's ability to beat people is important, but he's trying to do it down the middle, and you're not going to beat a good defense like this with players like Samaoya in the middle. He sort of gives uh, Morrell a little pat as he goes by. That freshman has a lot of boys. He's going to be a very good player for the Eagles. Quirino heads that 50-50 ball away. Now Madrid on to it. But the pass not there, and now Bolt for Sprague. And the foul on Peachman. And he got that foot up and committed the foul and he, getting a yellow card for it. And it just summarizes the day for Helga Peachman. He's been such a great player all year long, making all conference and fully deserved assistant captain. And he's just not gotten a grip on this game. He's just struggled under these conditions. And the man he got the boot on was Skylar Wilkes, who is limping around with just under three minutes to play as the clock stops. The yellow and the injury causing that. We get another look. Yeah, he raises that boot way too high and gets Wilkes on the ankle. Skyler Wilkes getting a jolt. He's a tough kid. He's a good athlete. He'll stay on. Been just reliable all season long down that left side for Bob Butorn's side. FGCU playing the final 12 minutes without Santiago Echeverria again red carded so North Florida the man advantage but unable to really come close since to getting that equalizer. 12 minutes is not that much time being a, a man up. If they had a little more time to exploit it maybe they have a chance but they've got a shot here and we're looking for that long ball. Solstad with the long ball but a little too long to get someone onto it and Ingham off his line. Very direct there. He's been very good, Ingham. Not, not that many difficult chances, but he's handled everything under adverse weather conditions today. Madrid long blast, well over the top. Nasta tries to hurry. As we have another stoppage. I think FGCU wanted to get someone new out there. Number 19, Derek Gebhard. Derek Gebhard will re-enter. On for Isaiah Madrid. Madrid is limping off the field. Do they have anybody left? If they go to overtime, I don't know where they're going to find the bodies to put 11 out there. Certainly has been a battle of attrition. Again, near 40 degree temperatures and rain throughout. Played on the home of Lipscomb University as they were the top seed. Finished in a tie atop the Atlantic Sun in the regular season with FGCU. North Florida in a desperate situation. 90 seconds to go. Shoshenowicz pressured, sends it back for Kyle Nasta. They send Malumba up ahead, but he can't get the 50-50. And now just 75 seconds left in North Florida season. They have been to the final the last two years, but they're a goal shy today. At this point, they just got to throw that ball or kick that ball into the box. What they say, they call the mixer. Get the ball in and look for a knockdown, a second ball, and a chance under these adverse circumstances. Here's Jay Bolt, just outside the 18. Knocked away Garcia with a foot on it. Just outside the six, again knocked away, and only about 30 seconds left to defend for FGCU. Nasta quickly to it. Kyle Nasta from just inside midfield. Just outside the 18, Marriott heads it out. And now FGCU may have just sealed it. Nasta drops it with 15 seconds left. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Carino for Garcia. Five, four, three, FGCU knocks it away, and the Eagles have landed a berth in the NCAA tournament for the third time in four years as they hold on in rainy Tennessee. 
That's what they did. They held on in the second half. Great, well-organized defense by Bob Buhorn's side. Should feel very proud of his team. I hope he's got some players left for the NCAA tournament. Well, congratulations to FGCU for Jay Bolton, North Florida. Close, but no cigar for them for the second year in a row. Uh, it's very disappointing for Derek Marinados and Josh Dunn, his fine assistant. They built this program, and Teddy Malumba has got to be discouraged. And so uh, Helga Peachman, who's just been a great player, but they just couldn't get a grip on the game today. They, uh, Florida Gulf Coast University's ability to keep possession and their ability to control the midfield. It's only appropriate. Stephen Oliveri was the guy that knocked the ball out with the final touch of the game. He was outstanding, as would survey. Uh, Saravia and that back three defense and the whole defensive effort. Florida Gulf Coast University is a very good defensive team, and that's why they're the champions. Well, with that, 19th shutout by uh, Nathan Ingham. He now ties the team record held by Adam Glick, who was a fine keeper for many years for FGCU. So it gives you an idea of Ingham's success in the pipes for FGCU and just how good the Eagles have been defensively this year. 14 goals allowed. They've now completed 19 matches. The system is, is, has worked very well, but they've got a good goalkeeper in there. Kyle Nasta was terrific in the goal for the Ospreys and Nathan Ingham for the Eagles. And you mentioned it, it tied the record. He's got another season to break that record and got an NCAA tournament ahead of him, which he, he might just uh, pass the record then. And, put the Eagles in good shape at that time. We're going to be joined momentarily by Bob Butehorn, the coach of the winning team, the FGCU Eagles. Again, their third NCAA team in four years, just like the women headed to the NCAAs for the third time in four years. Semifinalists a year ago, knocked out by North Florida. This year, winning over North Florida in the finals. Congratulations to FGCU. Bob Butehorn, I'm sure this has to feel awful good for you and your side. Yeah, it's a, it was a... It was it was a good win. It was a tough win, um, but we'll take it. It was you know, a little bit of a rocky season for us, um, but the kids played really hard in the end. They, they fought, and, uh, and, and that's what we needed. Sometimes these conference you know, finals are like this, so we, I'm really pleased. We were wondering if you guys were going to have enough bodies to finish the way things were going and then had to hand, handle the uh, man down for the last 12 minutes. Yeah, and the guys did well. They really did. I'm really pleased with them. It's a good group. I said all along I really enjoy this group, so um, I'm really pleased we get another chance to go to the show. So. Um, and they worked hard for it. You built a model, uh, model program there, Bob. Terrific. And your colleague Jim Blankenship has done the same. They got knocked off today. Maybe I'll have a couple players to lend to you for the NCAA yeah, tournament. I don't know if we can do that one. But, yes, thank you very much, Richard. It's, a, it's, a, it's nice to have that compliment from you. Well, we, we, we mean it. And, and Florida Gulf Coast University has been the standard bearer in soccer for the Atlantic Sun Conference for a long time. This is a quality win. As you say, it wasn't an easy one, but you, you really held up. And you're a good team defensively, aren't you? Well, we had to be tonight. And I think, uh, honestly, you know, Derek and his group had done really well. And it's tough to win when you have, uh, you have to win three, three games or try to win the third game in five days. And, and Derek's group was really, really good. Um, and I, I take my hat off to him and what he's done. And, and uh, they came in hot. And so for us to kind of get this win and shut them out, um, was pretty pretty good for us. Bob, congratulations. Thank good luck in the NCAA tournament. I, I'd say stay dry, but there's probably not much of a chance of that right no, now. No, thank you very <laughs> much, though. As Bob Butehorn, again, he is the head coach of FGCU. The goal was scored by one Will Soudois in the first half, about to 33 minutes in. And you can see the players dancing and celebrating as they will soon find out way, where they are headed. Uh, obviously, one of the reasons they are headed to the NCAAs is because of Will Soudois, who not only scored the only goal, he played a fantastic match until he had to leave due to injury. He certainly did. He played both ways, and that's what you're asked to do in that system when you're playing that flank position, get up and down and get forward as well. He did it both ends of the, of the field. Uh, again, we mentioned the only goal scored by one Will Soudois. First goal of the season came at an awful important time. Congratulations, Will, to you, your team, and the championship. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Describe the goal for us and, and how it was created. Uh, pretty much, uh, we, I got a ball on the outside. Uh, one of my players, uh, forward, took the defender to the outside. I pretty much just cut in, cut in again, and just blasted it in the corner with my left foot. 
Hey, left foot. I thought you were a right-footed player, Will. <laughs> I am right-footed. Well, not too bad on that. Well, I want to ask you about something else. A couple games ago, you didn't play very much in one game, and there was a message. I don't want to embarrass you because you're on a high right now. Tell us what happened and the influence that Coach Budhorn had on you. Uh, I mean, at, it was it was a tough it was a tough season for me. Uh, started off with a couple red cards, and uh, you know the other right back, uh, Luis Vega, does very well as well. So it was a great competition, and you know I just spoke to family, kept my kept my head on my shoulders, and just worked hard every day in training. Had a positive attitude, and here we are. For you and this team, what does it mean? Because you guys lost in the semis last year, and it, it appears that you guys have matured and maintained your composure a lot better this season than last. Yeah, this means this is amazing for us. Uh, we lost to UNF last year in the semifinals, so it was, it was a great feeling to, to beat them here in the finals and, and win the championship again. Uh, I know you're from France. Have you ever played in weather like this in a, in a tournament? And to be able to battle the elements, too, what does that say for the group? Uh, no, I, I, I'm from France, but I've never played in, a, in weather like this. Uh, just, I'm just proud of everybody, all, all the boys. We all worked hard for this, and that's, that's all I can say right now. Come on, Will. I've been to Paris. It rained every time I was there, and it was just natural <laughs> for you out here. How do you feel going in the NCAA tournament now? You must have a lot of confidence, but you've got some injuries, too. Yeah, we're very, we're very confident. Injuries are not a problem. We'll, we'll take care of those, and, you know, Everyone on the bench, everyone on the field, you know, we, we, we trust everyone. Everyone can do the job, so we're not, we're not too worried. We're very confident. Will, congratulations. Thanks for joining us. Good luck in the tournament. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, again, that's Will Sudwai. He scored the only goal of the match, leading FGCU to its third NCAA berth in four years. Terrific effort by the Eagles. Certainly was. It's a tribute to this program. They felt that they had some unfinished business from last year. They lost at home in the semifinals to North Florida and that depth. And let's give a lot of credit to Bob Butehorn. They were not as disciplined last year. And I referred to, to Will. He had to sit out a little bit because of a disciplinary situation. He bounced back and the team has learned and they're much more cohesive. Great credit to them and that man there, Bob Butehorn. So congratulations to Florida Gulf Coast University. They are headed to the NCAAs. Thanks to Richard Broad, Neil Solons, and our entire crew here in Nashville, Tennessee. The Eagles have landed a berth in the NCAA tournament. They beat the University of North Florida by a 1-0 score on a rainy day in Nashville. Congratulations to the Eagles. Good afternoon from Tennessee.
any better. I think that's much better standby. Actually still taping some stuff here. Yeah, just leave that there. Okay, good. Okay, good. Check one. Hey, how's it going, Casper? That sounds good. Step back song. Okay. How about here? How about very now? Very good, very good. Just talk. How about now? <laughs> How about now? I'm over here. Can you hear me now? Yeah. How's that, man? I'll keep, keep, talking, I'll keep talking. Hey, hey. How's it going, man? One, two, three, four. It's cold out four, here. Four, five, six. Raining. Seven, yeah, it's cold and rainy. It is. Seems like the rain picked up right when I ended. Yep. Yeah. I'm still talking, man. You good? Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's you great. Now? Okay, great. All right. Mark that other mic. I'm going to take on it. Say crap. I just want them to get, get this thing going, man. Yeah. Chris. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin the presentation of the all-tournament team and the championship trophy, the Atlantic Sun Conference would like to thank Wilkes Film University for serving as the host for this A-Sun Championship. A special thank you to the following individuals. Wilkes Film University President, Dr. Randy Lowry. Athletic Director, Philip Hutchison. Tournament Director, Frank Bennett. Tournament Hospitality Host, Paul Nance. Tournament Media Relations Director, Kirk Downs. The Lipscomb Athletic Training Staff, and Mark Forby. Let's give all these individuals and the entire Lipscomb staff a round of applause.
presenting the awards today on behalf of the Atlantic uh, Sun Conference is Assistant Commissioner John Roberts. The now for the presentation of the all-tournament team. Yeah. From Northern Kentucky, number two, Ian O'Reilly. Yeah. Yeah. From Lipscomb, number five, Ivan Alvarado. Also from Northern Kentucky, number 16, Kean McDonald. From North Florida, number five, Diogo Carino. Florida Gold Coast University, number 12, Will Savoy. From Florida Gold Coast, number 7, Santiago Atavori. Champions Trophy. Let's recognize our 2014 runner-up, the Ospreys of the University of North Florida. And now the winner of the 2014 Atlantic Sun Conference Men's Soccer Championship and an automatic berth into the NCAA Woo! College Cup, the Eagles of Florida Gulf Coast University. Let's go! 
Lipscomb University in the Atlantic Sun. We would like to thank all the fans in attendance today. Please travel home safely. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. You can hear me? Okay. All right, you tell me when you want to give this a run, and we're good. We saw what you had. Okay. Yeah, we just got to record this uh, rap.
in the men's soccer championship between two Florida golf. One more time. In the men's soccer championship between two Florida schools, it was Florida Gulf Coast University that dominated possession early. They did. They, they completely controlled the, the play. The first half, they were really the dominant side. I think it was six shots to zero for North Florida. They were much in control, and they did a lot of their good work down the right-hand side. This chance coming early on, Nasta getting wide, and then Oliveri getting a really good shot from that right-hand side. Again, good save by Nasta. And finally, it's Sudwa coming across from the right wing, hitting it with left foot, a brilliant shot into the far post, putting Florida Gulf Coast on top. We see it again, and the defense just can't quite get there in time. Shot by Sudwa beats Nasta, and Florida Gulf Coast on top, one nothing in the first half. And I stayed that way, and then the Eagles maintained possession early in the second half, too. They did, they came out, but much more aggressive performance by North Florida, and Kyle Nasta was up to the challenge. He didn't give up another one the rest of the time, but not enough attack from a team that has scored 12 goals in the last three games. This is their best chance. The knockdown comes to Camilo Garcia. He drives the ball off the outside of the post. Ingham not quite able to get there, but the ball doesn't go in the end of the game. Echeverry beats a couple players, comes in, collides with Nasta. He gets a red card, shockingly, on the situation. Has to depart the scene. For the last 12 minutes, they're playing a man down. And the, the Ospreys keep fighting, but finally with that last kick out by Stephen Oliveri, the Florida Gulf Coast University Eagles can celebrate a Atlantic Sun championship. So congratulations. They miss Bob Budhorn with the ice but they move on to the NCAAs for the third time in four years, the Eagles are soaring in men's soccer. And, and a, a, wor a worthy win. They were the... Seen for the last 12 minutes. They're
Bolts was seeking Peachman, but he slipped and fell on the turf. And now because of a slip, here comes FGCU going forward. Panam Bolts was seeking Peachman, but he slipped and fell on the turf. And now because of a slip, here comes FGCU going forward. Panagos wide to Sudwa. The test is just wide as Nasta had the angle. You talked about the weather. Bolts was seeking Peachman, but he slipped and fell on the turf. And now, because of a slip, here comes FGCU going forward. Panagos wide to Sudwa. The test is just wide, as Nasta had the angle. You talked about the weather conditions. Two players slipped down that time. Peachman trying to go for the pass from Bolt, and then uh, Teddy Malumba in the back, and it really was very... FGCU trying to win a title for the third time in four years. And Nasta tested, but able to keep his ground fairly well. Florida goes Gulf Coast University seems to be a little eager now. They sort of found their legs in this ground, and they're willing to take shots on Nasta. He's a good shot saver. Keep the ball on the ground. It makes it a lot harder. We got to look at foul called on North Florida. And FGCU with the restart. Sudwa near the 18 has some space and finds the back of the net. Will Sudwa with the goal, and FGCU answers the first tally of the year for Will Sudwa. A couple games ago, Will Sudwa was benched by Bob Butehorn for being late to practice. He's on time with a shot here, running across the top of the box. They don't get there in time, and even a fine goalkeeper like Kyle Nasta cannot make that play. FGCU has done a nice job handling the long ball. Have those three players in the back have been terrific. Guillen and Samayoa and Marriott. They're very athletic and very quick. Foul called on North Florida. And FGCU with the restart. Sudwa near the 18 has some space and finds the back of the net. Will Sudwa with the goal. And FGCU answers the first tally of the year for Will Sudwa. A couple games ago, Will Sudwa was benched by Bob Butehorn for being late to practice. He's on time with a shot here, running across the top of the box. They don't get there in time, and even a fine goalkeeper like Kyle Nasta cannot make that play. TCU has done a nice job handling the long ball. Have those three players in the back have been terrific. Guillen and Samayoa and Marriott. They're very athletic and very quick. Foul called on North Florida. And FGCU with the restart. Sudwa near the 18 has some space and finds the back of the net. Will Sudwa with the goal. And FGCU answers the first tally of the year for Will Sudwa. A couple games ago, Will Sudwa was benched by Bob Butehorn for being late to practice. He's on time with a shot here, running across the top of the box. They don't get there in time, and even a fine goalkeeper like Kyle Nasta cannot make that play. FGCU with the counter. And a terrific job to knock that one away. Kyle Nasta, though, with a challenge, challenged early here. And this is great work by Felipe. A strong, quick player. He can give them some more possession in the attacking end. Here's Camille Garcia. And a one-hopper is handled near post by Ingham. And that's the best chance so far. And you saw Ingham struggle a little bit to make sure of his footing. Jay Blank, good ball up ahead. And we mentioned Peachman. He's back in the game. He came in with those masses. I think maybe they sent so many. Here comes Albert Ruiz. Ruiz went down. Ball stays with FGCU as he went off North Florida. Very aggressive play that time by Teddy Malumba. And I think he's going to I know who's going to be covering that. I have an inkling, too. As Nasta off his line, able to knock that one away. 
in danger of hurting it for the time being. Connect on that pass. And now Madrid, yet another run. He's on sides. And sends it just wide. Oh, Kyle Nasta. It looked like he had the angle covered. That was a terrific run and shot by Madrid. It certainly was, and that's why Isaiah Madrid made second team all conference. Service toward the box. Garcia gets a foot, slides it far post and got the post. North Florida still with the attack going. But FGCU, again, possession much of the match, controlling now. Good run by Echeverry. On to it. Nasta off his line, though, able to make the play. Foul on Echeverry. A yellow card or a red? Let's take a look at this. The quickness of Santiago. But FGCU, again, possession much of the match, controlling now. Good run by Echeverry. On to it. Nasta off his line, though, able to make the play. Foul on Echeverry. A yellow card or a red? Let's take a look at this. The quickness of Santiago Echeverry sliding in. He manages to catch Nasta coming in. And I, I, it may have been a red card for charging the goalkeeper. He was just simply making a play on the ball. And I, I, this is really. But FGCU, again, possession much of the match, controlling now. Good run by Echeverry. On to it. Nasta off his line, though, able to make the play. Foul on Echeverry. A yellow card or a red? Let's take a look at this. The quickness of Santiago Echeverry sliding in. He manages to catch Nasta coming in. And I, I, it may have been a red card. A man up. And again, that's even if there's an equalizer, that's the way it would go throughout. No substitution after the red card. And if they can get a goal, that'll give them the extra time to get the winner. In space, North Florida. A man up, unable to come up with anything there. And all of it with 15 seconds left. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Carino for Garcia. FGCU knocks it away, and the Eagles have landed a berth in the NCAA tournament for the third time in four years as they hold on in rainy Tennessee. That's what they did. They held on in the second half. Great, well-organized defense by Bob Butehorn's side. He should feel very proud of his team. I hope he's got some players left for the NCAA tournament. Well, congratulations to FGC with 15 seconds left. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Carino for Garcia. FGCU knocks it away, and the Eagles have landed a berth in the NCAA tournament for the third time in four years as they hold on in rainy Tennessee. That's what they did. They held on in the second half. Great, well-organized defense by Bob Butehorn's side. He should feel very proud of his team. I hope he's got some players left for the NCAA tournament. Well, congratulations to FGC. Well, we had to be tonight, and I think, uh, honestly, you know, Derek and his group had done really well, and it's tough to win when you have, uh, you have to win three, three games or try to win the third game in five days, and, and Derek's group was really, really good, um, and I, I take my hat off to him and what he's done, and, and uh, they came in hot, and so for us to kind of get this win and shut them out um, was pretty, pretty good for us. Bob, congratulations. Thank good luck in much. the NCAA tournament. I, I'd say stay dry, but there's probably not much of a chance of that right yeah, now. No, thank you very much, though. <laughs> As Bob Butehorn, again, he is the head coach of FGCU. The goal was scored by one Will Soudois in the first half, about uh, 33 minutes in.
Florida Gulf Coast, number seven, Santiago Atavari. Champions Trophy. Let's recognize our 2014 runner-up, the Ospreys of the University of North Florida. In the men's soccer championship between two Florida schools, it was Florida Gulf Coast University that dominated possession early. They did. They, they completely controlled the play. The first half, they were really the dominant side. I think it was six shots to zero for North Florida. They were much in control, and they did a lot of their good work down the right-hand side, this chance coming early on, Nasta getting wide, and then Oliveri getting a really good shot from that right-hand side. Again, good save by Nasta, and finally, it's Sudwa coming across from the right wing, hitting it with left foot, a brilliant shot into the far post, putting Florida Gulf Coast on top. We see it again, and the defense just can't quite get there in time. Shot by Sudwa beats Nasta, and Florida Gulf Coast on top, one nothing in the first half. And I stayed that way, and then the Eagles maintained possession early in the second half, too. They did, they came out, but much more aggressive performance by North Florida, and Kyle Nasta was up to the challenge. He didn't give up another one the rest of the time, but not enough attack from a team that had scored 12 goals in the last three games. This is their best chance. The knockdown comes to Camilo Garcia. He drives the ball off the outside of the post. Ingham not quite able to get there, but the ball doesn't go in the end of the game. Echeverry beats a couple of players, comes in, collides with Nasta. He gets a red card, shockingly, on the situation. Has to depart the scene for the last 12 minutes. They're playing a man down, and the, the Ospreys keep fighting, but finally with that last kick out by Stephen Oliver, the Florida Gulf Coast University Eagles can celebrate a Atlantic Sun championship. So congratulations. They miss Bob Budhorn with the ice, but they move on to the NCAAs for the third time in four years. The Eagles are soaring in men's soccer. And, and a, a, wor a worthy win. They were the 